Welcome, welcome everyone to uh, the final live stream edition of um, Joe Wolf or John Webster Film or Cinematic Realms. Uh, <laughs> we, we really got to streamline that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we are joined today uh, by a very special guest. And as it turns out, our last live stream guest, which that was not planned at all, but uh, we're very fortunate to have Miss Alicia Kingston on uh, to talk with us about a movie that Amy and I actually hadn't seen before. Uh, called the autobiography of Miss Jane Pittman. Um, so first, AK, I just want to welcome you to the channel and ask you to uh, tell the folks a bit about yourself. Uh, who are you and uh, what do you do online? Um, yes, hello. I am Alicia Kingston, uh, AK, mostly known in the streams. Um, what do I do online? Uh, uh, maybe a bit of everything. <laughs> I don't know I do have my own YouTube channel. Um, if you if you've known me from seeing me everywhere, though, you know that my channel isn't the best place to find me. Um, I you know go, sub to all my friends because that because that's <laughs> usually where I hang out with them with these two guys with uh Stephen on Here Be Dragons with the Mad Queens, uh, Lady Diligence, Monero, T Baby, and Timo Lisi. Um, hang out with the uh, Phil Tony Teflon a uh, good amount of time so. Um, I talk about random nerd things. Um, when these guys say, hey, we got a subject, you interested? I'm usually like, yeah, sure, let's go. <laughs> that That's pretty much it. You've been killing um, it with the WandaVision. Uh, oh, dude. Bits, though. Wand WandaVision is is like my bay right now. It's, I know, it's, right? It's, it's doing well. It's, it's doing well. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's funny because even I, who I'm not the biggest MCU fan in the world, um, it's his brand. Other than yeah, it, it, it's sort of my <laughs> brand. Like, I, that's his, his brand. I, I actually am not as antagonistic towards the MCU as the the legend. As a know, lot of people are. May, may, mm -hmm. No, as the legend sort of you know spreads. It but he loves Kira Knightley even more than the legend. So there is you know. A little bit <laughs> there. Um, which. By the way, uh, it's been mentioned, so be sure to follow Amy and I as the Knights <laughs> of Kira on Twitter, Instagram, and Tumblr. Okay, sorry, we, we have to um, we have to throw that up every every time it's mentioned. Shameless um, plugs, shameless plugs, you must. Uh, real, real quick sidebar. Um, yeah. Thank you for the compliment. Uh, Lady Leaf says she likes my earrings. If you know who Living My Rhapsody is, Ooh. then you'll know who made my art. Yes, she gifted nice. these to me when we met at uh, Ice and Fire Con a couple years ago. Oh, that's so wonderful. Yeah, yeah, Liv's awesome. And she just recently sent me chocolate from Poland, and it's delicious. Oh. oh. Chocolate. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and now- This is it, now the chocolate appreciation stream. Thank you for joining us, Suffer. I, I have to sit here and do a live stream. I can't uh, just hey. get up and go grab some chocolate. I'm just saying, he asked me what I did on the interwebs and I make friends. And sometimes my friends will send me delicious chocolates like this beautiful mix right here. It's a uh, chocolate with a panna cotta mixed in. That's going to be the next bar that I tackle. I, I do want to say real quick, I, I had the option today between uh, sh shaving the beard because it was starting to get out of hand, but I knew that a lot of people would be really excited if I just yeah. let it go. Uh, so this is for Wait all of you guys. I think someone's going to start a John's Beard fan club. Like It's gotten <laughs> to an obsessive level. I love it. He's still going to be seen on YouTube just as much, even though you guys aren't doing lives over here anymore. So, yeah, people are checking for the trim, man. You got to keep yeah. it. Yeah, we're still going to have actual video versions of our conversation, so you can get on to him just as much as you want. Yeah, but they, mm -hmm. but they can't, but they can't um, take me to task live. Live. So. Yeah. You <laughs> so. can only shame. It's only post-shame, you know? Post-shame. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So yeah, um, feed the YouTube algorithm by commenting on every on every video and whether or not he has a beard. <laughs> yeah, <appreciate> exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> there it is. See, <laughs> yeah, he spoke it into existence. 
Um, we we were making a point to read comments out loud because uh, for when if we transfer you know uh, certain episodes over to the podcast format, but that's been kind of thrown out the window so far because you guys are just throwing out comments like Joel. But this is Kate, uh, you know, announcing the formation of John, the John's Beard Club. She's the vice president, and Aaron, of course, would be the president. You know who better? So. Um, <laughs> But uh, moving back over for a second to uh, WandaVision, um, like, so even for me, who I'm, you know, I haven't been the biggest MCU fan in the world, but I have been absolutely in love with WandaVision. I, I think it's, it's just been crazy and wacky in all the right ways. And mm -hmm. Uh, and just so imaginative, but um, yeah, I, I saw you've been doing videos on those. I mean, what's been your reaction to the show so far? Um, overall, I would say I'm happy with the show. You know, there, there's a few episodes in the beginning that I'm like, yeah, come on, I, I need I need no. more than just ten minutes of an episode. No, that that's no, been my issue. It's it. just the the it, no, it's only the length, the content, and what was there, and how they're spinning it great okay. i just don't appreciate an episode only being 10 minutes when we have when it's labeled to be 27 but the rest of those minutes are just credits that's okay, a that's a commercial break for me you know that, that that's my big beef with it um overall like i said though i love the concept i love how they've been spinning it um particularly with this uh last episode though a lot lot of um, the theories that me and lauren have kicked around around um in our discussions after watching the episodes have been have uh been true and we're still waiting to see what you know the bigger grander deal is gonna be you know we we got what two three more episodes left so we, we're gonna have to wrap, wrap this up well i guess it's not gonna be completely wrapped up because it's also gonna lead into loki and then into yeah. the main and mcu Dr. Strange. so yeah, yeah. And I, and I know um, Jaded Redhead, who's in the chat, uh, Kelly, she and I are both Hi, Kelly. comics readers. So we're constantly like, okay, there's five possible big bads, you know? So we're like mm -hmm. going through the comics like, okay, well, this can, he connects with Doctor Strange, but this one connects with Captain Marvel, you know, trying to figure out like, mm -hmm. it could be at this point, I'm like down to two or three possibilities. So, um, but there's yeah. one theory in particular that was confirmed this last episode. And I literally got up uh, out of, off my couch and did a dance. Cause I was like, I called it. I called Bolton. it. Bolton? Which one huh? was it? Which it one was, was it? Was it was it Photon or or who the current villain is? Who the current villain is? Who killed okay. the dog? Basically, okay, what. yeah, <laughs> yeah. See, I, I don't know for the people that y'all didn't guess that from episode one. I, I, maybe you just ain't as cool as us. I'm sorry, I'm I say it. Not everyone is a is a um, comic reader. I also called it on Photon too, though. I will say. Yeah, so I, I, did, I pat myself on the back like a lot. So, um, and I did see like even though I haven't seen the show, I, I saw that the the thing with the the dog is a Parks and Rec reference apparently. Yeah, yeah. Um, which you know, Amy oh, yeah, keeps. She, she called Leslie Nope a dog killer. Uh, ah, you have to watch Parks and Rec. I know. I, I did this actually is just. Like the, you know, many hills I would die on, but Parks and Rec being the best <laughs> comedy ever is one of the tallest hills I shall die on. You know, that show, I, I have only ever watched one episode, but there there's certain things that I decide to keep up with just by watching social media. And going through Tumblr, when, when I did used to do Tumblr, I, I, I pretty much get the gist of, of, of all of the show. <laughs> so I'll, I'll say it's good, and maybe I'll go back and watch it one day. I don't know. John, if you want to tag team on that, if you ever get around to it, let me know. And well, my list, but season it three is yeah. when it becomes TV gold. So just... just... <laughs> <laughs> Power three seasons one and two is all I'm going to say. Well, Do not give up after right. season one because it gets so, so good. Um, no, I, I insist we'll that every, see. I insist that every show that I watch hit the ground running because that's a very common thing. Yes. No, uh, <laughs> uh, no show takes a couple seasons to warm up. None. Um, none. No, that's never done. How dare they? Um, but I will say that I did just set up, uh, Peacock on my, uh, Amazon, uh, fire stick. So, uh, so I could start watching it, but I oh, also, you do have to give the premium to watch after season three. Peacock is annoying. I'm so mad. So the popular shows, they only give you the first couple yeah. of seasons. No, I, yeah, I, don't, I, you, I don't you have to pay for that. Don't you have to pay for Peacock period yeah. though? 
So if you have it with your cable, you ought to already get it, but then you have to pay for premium to get all of the all things that yeah, are offered. Yeah, yeah. And I've been watching Mr. Mayor, actually, which is uh, written by Tina and produced by Tina Fey, and it's really funny. I got a download place for that. Just, well, you didn't hear that from me, but no, <laughs> uh, I, I don't. I don't always. Pay By that for such she means things. purchasing and then downloading. <laughs> so, yes, that. Yes. See, here's the. Don't thing. do this at home. Here's the thing, Amy. I was just looking up, and Peacock is you watch it for free, uh, you know, or uh, Peacock Premium is four ninety nine, or if you have. Uh, I unlocked it with Xfinity and yeah. I actually do have it's the premium service. So okay, I should so, you're good to watch. so I yeah. should actually okay. be fine. Awesome. But I also but I also want to watch 30 Rock, which I've never seen before. So I've I, seen I, a couple of seasons. So I'm sorry, you you might get mad at me if I Mark's uh, Rec has to go start watch. 30 Rock. I've seen it, it is funny, but it's not Oh it has like, to, oh does my. it? Oh it, it has, has to. to. It has to. Okay. I'm gonna quit because, live on the air. Because that <laughs> always because it has to always works as a motivating, you know, tactic. Um, I will stop our X Men animated series watch party <laughs> if you do this, John. What is that? Wait, that, that, a that watch party? Hurt. When's that happening? No, that's her and me. That'll hurt you just oh. as much as it'll hurt me, Amy. You that's know true. it, and I know it. That's true. <laughs> I know. Dang it. <sighs> wow. What? 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 I I just have one question. From that, when does the X Men watching happen? <laughs> So like, can, can I, if I bring some popcorn and, and some wine for everybody, can, can, can I watch? It, it happens pretty much whenever Amy and I are up too late. Yeah, and, it'll and, be like, and, it'll be midnight. And I'll oh, just, so you're not else. Like and I'll just right. message him and be like, I finished grading X Men. <laughs> That's basically how planned it is. <laughs> be like, sure, I don't need to go to bed at any at time all. resembling early. <laughs> <laughs> I can sleep in until noon the next day. Yeah, yeah I'm, it's, glad, it's, I'm glad that you're enjoying WandaVision. I think it's it's a really interesting. It's a, it's a fun show. That's like yeah. kind of, and this is something John and I talk about a lot. Where when you release an episode week by week, it definitely creates more of a community around it. And definitely, I do really appreciate definitely. that with WandaVision because mm -hmm. if we got it all at once, there would be people who already knew before others, you know. So yeah, and I don't um, like that. And same thing I with the materials. It. You know, it was nice to it's see. I, I read the books, but it was still nice to see, sh especially show only watchers, be like, "What?" Every episode, <laughs> and then talk to them about it. Yeah. And then they'd ask I, me. About I enjoy that. Like, Just wait and see. <laughs> so it's very fun. And yeah, course, I enjoy that with uh, the expanse as well. I, I like the the hype. Then we get to talk about it, you know, week to week. So it's good. Yeah. Oh, the expanse. God, <laughs> boy, was that good. But yeah. <laughs> um, the, we have the, a the expanse is Bay right now. The expanse yeah. is Bay. We expanse do have Bay. our resident troll here tonight. Yeah. Potter is here. Hello, you, Peter. You, you, you want to respond Potter. to that, Amy? Uh, Potter knows how much I hate The Last Samurai, and I know he knows that it's uh, not Japan and not China. But this uh, gives me an opening to be like, oh my gosh, I can't wait for my birthday episode because we're talking about Mulan, the animated movie. There is no other one. No other one was ever created. So Yeah, well, why'd you have to specify? It, there um, is no I just other did it to version. be extra clear, you know, just in case, like, someone was watching the Chinese uh you know, live action movie from two, like 2007 or eight, just to, to be clear, you know? Yeah. You know, that, that, that last samurai boy, I, you, <laughs> you, you cast Chow Young Fat as one of the biggest people in the village this dude ends up in and Chow Young Fat and all his people die. Yeah. But that asshole from the West with, with, it, with, I, with I, his I, pale skin lives to you have the a word, barrage. It has a word, and you know it, AK. It's Orion. <sighs> do, do want to clarify, uh, because... I'm, I'm sorry. That's, that's, that, that's with a gripe with that movie. Complex. I'm well, sorry. No, I, yeah, I, I don't I wanna, like it. I want to clarify that the actor was, in fact, Ken Watanabe, uh, not Chow Young. Wasn't it Chow Young? No. Uh, I, got, yeah. I got that. How did I get that mixed up? What the hell did I see that looked like the last samurai that Chow Young Fat was in? <laughs> I feel bad for that because I I try, I try very hard not to mix Asian actors up because that's something a lot of people do and I don't like it. So I'm mad at myself right now. I apologize for that mistake. Normally I'm the one that's, that's getting canceled. <laughs> I'm ca I'm canceling myself so for that bullshit. <laughs> I'm canceling myself for that because no that 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 really does upset me I, that, that I didn't remember that. I mean that I'm was... I'm looking at his filmography right now. 
Uh, that that was actually an instance where the Oscars did something right. Did that well, it actually that was a very they they got a lot right that year because that was the year that Lord of the Rings swept the Oscars. But also they nominated Ken Watanabe for his performance in The Last Samurai, and then it got like nothing else in the main categories. So I mean, Ken Watanabe was the only good thing about that movie. Makes sense. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. And if you do want some Chow Yun Fat, I recommend the uh, the movie he did about Confucius. He was a great Confucius. Um, that, that, yeah, that I don't know. I don't know. I was, I was looking of. at the movie titles. I'm not sure which one you could have thought. Yeah, was like that. I, I don't know either. Like I but said, I'm canceling. My, I'm sorry. That, I'm but, I'm canceling myself for that because <laughs> yeah, that that was bogus. Don't do that, people. Don't do that. Know who these people are. They don't all look alike. And uh, but speaking of him, we will be uh, you know at some point. I I don't think we actually have it on the schedule. Not yet. yet but but we're gonna do Crouch and Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Uh, which I'm pretty sure two like two of my favorite actors in that movie. Yes. Love them. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, I think Steven will kill me if, if he is not allowed to talk about that with us, Amy. So. Steven and I don't fight about much, but <laughs> what is better, Crouching Tiger, <laughs> Hidden Dragon versus uh, House of the Flying Daggers is actually what ooh, we might friend break up ooh. over. Cause I love House of the Flying Daggers. So yeah, we'll, we'll be doing that first. Otherwise you'll <laughs> yeah. kill me. <laughs> Amy, if, if you need someone on your team for House of Flying Daggers, Amy, I got you. See, if I got AK, that's where it's like five people. That uh, dude, See, and that's the thing. There, there's not a lot of people that know even know what that movie is. Yeah. I, I remember going to see that in theaters on a fluke after me and my cousins had watched something else and we didn't feel like going home yet. So we snuck into another movie. I was like, oh, wait, no. House of Flying Daggers. Let's go. That one. Well, and I'm definitely going to talk about this when we do our episode on it. But I was in... Um, when I was working on my master's, uh, those that know me know I do Chinese studies. I had to just randomly find in this huge, um, like collection of, of basically encyclopedia. It was a very old encyclopedia from the, from about 1000 in China, you know, about 1000 wow. back when they were back when they'd been around for a very long time still. Um, <laughs> and I, I just turned to a random page and I found the song that is in, um, house of the flying daggers that she sings as she hits the drums. Oh, and I wow. was like, this is fate. This House of the Flying Daggers knows how much I love it. That was and, the chosen one. And yes, no, that's a great way to put it, Guilty. Uh, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon versus House of Flying Daggers is Kirk versus Picard of yeah. the Chinese cinema. Yeah. That is what it is. Um, <laughs> yep. And then, like, way over here is Hero, which everyone kind of agrees is awesome. So Hero is awesome, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. And if you are yeah. listening to, or slash watching this and you are a Chinese cinema fan, especially liking Hero, uh, John, Stephen, and I did an episode on Hero. We had a good time. Yes, yes, and, that was a good was, conversation. And that was even before you came on as co-host. That a, was. A, 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 that it's, was. It just mm -hmm. you know there was no way you weren't going to be on here to talk about Hero. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, uh, but that was great. I had had a lot of yeah. fun doing that. And I give and, a shout out to uh, Takeshi Kaneshiro because he's the uh, one of the main stars in House of Flying Daggers, and he is a great martial artist and a great actor. Yeah. Absolutely. There was something I wanted to uh, ask you, but we're going to, we'll dive more into it uh, afterwards because towards the end, we're going to talk some more about movies and, and TV shows that you like, but I uh, take it uh, you are a, a Star Trek fan. Yes. Correct? Yes. Yeah. Yes. What, what, what's your, what's your favorite uh, version of Star Trek? Favorite versions? Mm. I honestly don't know with how wide their pantheon is. I don't know that I can pick a single one in the first slot. It's like asking me to pick between Naomi and uh, Bobby. I can't, I can't do it. <laughs> so what I will say is it's tied between uh, TNG and um, Voyager with Deep Space Nine as a very, very close second to both of those. Nice. Yeah, I, I am pretty much uh, just absolutely head over heels in love with DS9, yeah. which is... Uh, Question? Yeah. Question. Dax or Ezri? Um, Jadzia or Ezri? Jadzia. Amy? Uh, it's been way too long, so I don't think I can answer because I, okay. Okay. I'm, the I'm, answer, I'm, I'm one of the annoying the, the answer that is Jadzia. the original the, yeah, the to the point where you want to strangle me. So if you ask me anything about Star Trek, I'd be like the original, the very first one. I, why why okay. is this even a conversation? Well, well, we'll, we'll, but I we'll have seen everything Star Trek. Is. It's just been so long since I've watched everything because I just rewatched the original series so many times. 
Oh, J John was correct. The right answer is Jadzia. <laughs> okay, yeah. good. Yay. Always Jadzia. If he said it wrong, I do have the power to kick him off this stream. So you just let me know, okay? Uh, you then know he'll what? just I'll come back and kick me off and it'll be a whole thing. But, whatever. Um, but we, we will dive more into that uh, after yeah, we and, and dive in, in, into our main topic pages. We should get to that at some point. Yes, probably. yes. We, we, we've had 20 minutes of the appetizer now. So let, let's get to the steak. And then we'll have uh, I, although I do hope you guys like, uh, you know, what we did with that first 20 minutes, because that is, you can expect more of that as Amy and I transition to the podcast, because we are going to spend lots of time just goofing around and talking about a wide range of topics. I have found that that's the best way to do discussions because it, it keeps everybody drawn in and, and we, yeah. you never really go static on it. it well, and nice especially mix. when we have guests, we want our listeners and watchers to get to know our guest a little bit. Right, um, right. Especially yeah. if they've never heard of you, which like, psh, yeah, yeah. You I, I, know I, AK, I don't. But well, no, no <laughs> I'm not that many people that know me. <laughs> I think it was important because she hasn't been around that much, so mm -hmm. you, you, right. you know, we we, we have She's to like educate me. She people. She never guests on... on live streams. You never see her anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I would say you can always find me in the chats, but it, it, looking for me on my channel, mm, I, I don't remember who it was, but someone had put in, in uh, the chat one of the last times I was on with these guys, it might have been for the Expanse, the worst person to find it, the worst place to find AK, and they put my, my channel address up, and that is absolutely <laughs> right. <laughs> that is the last place on YouTube you will find me, is on my own channel. Yeah. <laughs> So today we are talking about a film which uh, I'd never seen before and I'd never even uh, heard of, and that is the autobiography of Miss Jane Pittman, which thankfully uh, is right now pretty widely available. It's I know yeah, Amy and I watched it on HBO Max, so that was that was very nice, and it's uh, from 1974, and I was delighted that uh, mm -hmm. the film itself is in great condition. It, it looked very and very nice. Um, that's not always the case with older films. Um, but uh, why don't you tell us why you selected this movie to talk about it? Okay. Um, first off, real quick, is there, and it was Leaf in the chat that said that. Thank you, Lady Leaf. I appreciate that. And I appreciate you knowing me that well. <laughs> so, why did I choose this movie? Well, one, we, we were talking about black history and you said you did it didn't necessarily have to be something you know just rooted completely in history but you know maybe just speak about a specific person or a situation that might have happened that is the crux of you know what's going down in the movie and i was on on the fence probably for a good two weeks i know like you and amy were messaging me I'm like no i'm sorry i haven't picked yet <laughs> oh, give me till this weekend and like really at the last minute sadly I found out the news that uh, Lady Cicely Tyson died. And that was the light bulb because, you know, she has been one of my favorite actresses since I was a child. One of the first movies about anything heavy having to do with black history that I remember from my childhood is the autobiography of Miss Jane Pittman. And she played Miss Jane Pittman in that movie. So I, I don't see how I couldn't have chosen that. You know, it just, it, it felt very fitting. And I wanted to do something in my meagerness to uh, honor her and, and her work that she's done in the black community and on the big screen for multiple years of excellence. So that's why I picked it. Yeah, I'm curious. Uh, when was it that you first saw this? You... I first saw this, I think when I was maybe eight or nine. Somewhere, somewhere around that that age, yeah. That must have been powerful to see at, at that young age. It was like I, I, you know, didn't really know anything about the world. Young, young kid, half raised in Brooklyn, you know, from the West Indies, and American schools don't really do right by Black history sometimes. So yeah. you don't find out a lot of things that are going down unless you have an education that's coming from outside of those schools sometimes. And luckily, my mom and my stepdad, even though they're not Americans. They came from uh, Guyana with me as well, but they they had the forethought to know, okay, she needs to learn some of this stuff and learn how to deal with certain situations that are still going to come up. And every one of those situations that Miss Jane was in still speaks to the real world um, and the politics of some situations today. So yeah. I'm glad I watched it at such a young age and I was able to understand 
what was happening. And I think your point about, um, you know, uh, quite frankly, the, the lack of progress uh, makes me think about that line whenever he, the interviewer asked Miss Jane, you know, oh, I want to know what it was like in those days. And she looks at him and goes, in those days, which just shows you, you know, um, if you were to mm -hmm. say the same thing now about the 60s, I'd like to know what it was like in those, oh, in those days, right? It assumes yeah. that it's over and that's just, mm -hmm. that's not true. And also, okay, I love what you case. were saying about education because it was either the Hidden Figures stream or the Selma stream, you were in the chat. It might've been the Selma stream because I think it was you and Monaro in the I chat think it was talking Selma, about, yeah. yeah, talking about um, the, uh, the massacre at Tulsa and I'm from Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. And we did not e learn that in class. I learned that by reading um, a book from a scholastic book fair that luckily at least came to my school, but it was not part of the curriculum. You uh, know where I learned in it? Oklahoma history class, we had a whole semester of Oklahoma history and that never came up. I, I didn't even learn it that way. I learned about it on a TV show. And I was one of those folks who was like, wait, nah, this shit didn't happen. Nah, nah. And then I went and looked it up. I said, oh boy. And that wasn't the only one. That is not taught in black history or even regular history classes. That's not talked about. And they call it a race riot. And it wasn't a race riot. It was a straight up massacre. Yeah. And riot it, riot assumes so sad. That, yeah. Riot yeah. assumes that the people being attacked did something wrong. And that's just not mm -hmm. the case. And, it's and that is also, and that's also a situation that she goes through as a young girl. And, you know, we'll get to that when we get to that part in the movie, but it just speaks volumes for that. You know, it, that 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 those days it and yet we still in them days it's not those yeah. days it's still here and now yeah there was a feeling that i doubt while watching this film especially as you know you follow this character and mm -hmm. and the character around here how this is sort of an escapable sense of even though things are sort of slowly changing over time there was there's this feeling of just not much changing that much it, it, it's mm -hmm. it, you know and it's and it's sort of heartbreaking and then to watch her go from you know a young girl to a, you know a very old woman and to watch how sort of glacial you know actual progress feels and mm -hmm. but yeah, for, for those of you counting, that was J John Sy, number one. For John Sy, number one. You know what? Um, there might not be very many patriarchy sets this time, so I'm oh, wait, that, John I, I was going to say, is that the drink? Yeah. Is that the drink this stream? All right. John Sy. That's the drink, John Sy. That, wait, that, that was two Sy's right there. I'm taking a double. <laughs> All right, I'm doing Um, But yeah, and, and so, and then we feel that sense. And now, Amy, you said on the last stream that, you know, progress isn't linear. And and so it can very often feel like, you know, things have barely changed because we might make some progress, but then it feels like we kind of step back. And so over time, it feels like that change is very slow. And I do think you get a sense of that in this film. Well, and, and something that's been in the news lately was the... Um the black couple who had their home appraised and it was very low and they had yeah. their white friend pretend to live there. She brought in her family photos, displayed it, took away anything that showed a black it family doubled. and it was 500 K more. So it's not really based on the condition of the house. Mm -hmm. It's based on how the realtor or how the appraiser perceives that the previous family was like and took care of the house. Right. Um, so I, and I mean that just that kind of, um, and, and depending on what neighborhood it's in, right? I mean, this is mm -hmm. something I talk about a lot because I'm in Chicago is that segregation as far as housing is still very much alive. Uh, yep. So, you know, you might be, you know, people of color might be able to go and drink from whatever, you know, fountain they want, but, you know, they can't get a house where they want to get it, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and their house is, is devalued. And so what I love about having Miss J. Pittman go at the end of the movie and drink from that fountain is that, yeah, she was born owned, and then was quote unquote free. And here she is a free twice. woman wanting to, you know, yeah, twice wanting to drink from a water fountain and that's still not allowed. I mean, how, how mm -hmm. like those days, really? Those days are these days. And yeah, there's something very significant about that. But as you know, just to keep in line with John, that is towards the end of the movie. So yeah. I'll say yeah. that. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. Occasionally we, we try and move somewhat linearly, but somewhat we, usually linear. end up, we usually end up just jumping around whatever we're talking That's about. But, I, I done been here with y'all before. You know, this what we do. We yeah. know. Um, but, but yeah, following up on that, you know, the idea of being free in, in this film, it's, you, you know, it's notable that even after the slaves are freed, you know, her and, you know, and her husband, you know, end up talking about, you know, being freed after, you know, Mm -hmm. you know, from, you know, working on that, you know, other plantation and uh, after the slaves have been technically freed, but it, it's just interesting on a practical level, how that actually worked that or didn't work. work. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. And being freed doesn't mean that your the, your quote unquote previous owner can't say, well, now you owe me years and years of rent and clothing and food. So mm -hmm. pay me and leave. I mean, you know, well, well, not even that. Yeah. Not even that, but where are you going to go? Yeah. Where yeah. are you actually going to go where you would be somewhat safe and able to get food and clothes and all that? You know, it's, it's horrible. Yeah, they showed what happens on the road when you try to, to yeah, be free. Yeah, that's, that's actually pretty much where the story starts. You know, we see the elder, Miss Jane, and a reporter comes to see her and, uh, you know, hear about her life story. I don't, they never say how he heard about this woman that was, you know, used to be a slave and is still alive and, and, and remarkably aware, honestly, you know, once you get past a certain age, even if you don't have Alzheimer's or dementia, well, even without that, you tend to be very forgetful. And sometimes you can get a bit loopy, never a problem with Miss Jane. She, she had absolute hundred percent sound of mind. And he asked her, you know, well, well, well how, how much can you tell me? And she's like, okay, so you want me to start like where he's like, uh, you know, let's start with the war. Which one? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, uh, you know, I, I, could, I could tell you about World War II, or I could tell you about the first one, or even that one that happened in Cuba. You know, where, where, where you want to go? And it, it was decided they'll go back as far as she can remember. So we start with the Civil War. And she's a slave, a young girl. It didn't look more than like 11, 12, maybe. On there, her name was uh, Sissy, I believe is what they Ticey, called Ticey, I think. Ticey. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. I see. Thank you. And, you know, the Confederate army comes up. They're all tired from some battle that they just walked from or whatever. And the missus of the house comes out, you know, offers them, you know, Alfred's the captain, like wine. And the, the men, she, I see, is told to get water for them and whatnot. And then they have to march off because another attack from the Confederates is coming down the road. So that happens. Confederates now come to the plantation. And not the Confederates, I'm sorry. Um, the North. Yeah. The, the union, uh, the yeah, union, yeah. yeah. union soldiers comes in, yeah, because yeah. they won the battle, so they come in and being polite, you know, quote unquote southern charm, the the missus, you know, gives the same offer to their commander and the men. Now their main commander um, seemed seemed like a decent dude. Um, I do have one slight grief with him, you know, once he starts uh, talking to Ticey and he's like, you know, did they ever beat you or blah blah blah, like he's trying to you know help her or give her some counsel or whatever. And I get to talk and he, he's very, he's very nice and polite with her. And then, you know, he says, well, what's your name? And she tells him a name. He's like, no, 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 that's your slave name. We, 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 there, there are a bunch of pretty names from the North that we, that we could give you pick one. And I get his sentiment, but my gripe is dude, now you're, you're just another white guy coming in and tell this girl that her, her name ain't her name. Yeah. Who, by the way, is about to leave. <laughs> exactly. It was about to leave. Sure. Like, bro. You are a drop in an ocean of this young woman's life. You ain't give her no contact information. You say, okay, you know, you, they went through a list of names. She picked Jane. You say, okay, your name's Jane from now on. You can change it to whatever you, when you want to when you're older, but for right now it's Jane. Who, and if Ty, and if, if, her, if her master calls her Ty, see, what, what was she going to do? Say my name is Jane and get beat? Yeah. Yeah, that, that was that was very much on, on my mind. It's like, dude, yeah. you, you yeah. just, you know... Uh, charged her basically with, with with doing something that may you know may get her into into harm. trouble yeah. and, and physical harm and mm -hmm. you're just gonna leave in a second but you mm -hmm. dropped off that little present for her 
Right. Um, there's that. And he says, you know, if anybody gives you any trouble about your name or whatnot, then you come on up to Ohio and tell me. Yeah, no starting address. <laughs> she doesn't know this man's name. He didn't give her no type of money to get on, on anybody's boat or wagon to get anywhere near Ohio. What the hell is she going to come find you for? Yeah, You're going to forget like, who, who like she Corporal is tomorrow. Or something like that. But, you know, yeah. what, how is she going to remember that? How is she going to remember that? From later. Yeah. You're gonna forget all about this little girl tomorrow when you when you wake up and you fight another battle. What, what I, are you doing? I, I had a I sensed a superiority complex from him mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it was not as bad as the redneck Confederates, and that to me, you know, that's it's exactly that's like saying I'm not is. as bad as this one murderer because I only murdered three people and they murdered seven. <laughs> you yeah. know, whole like, uh, it's and not I, and I did it to help your people, so you know we're we're cool, right? That's that's exactly the gist I got of it. It's a superiority complex. Um, but yeah, like like you were saying, you know, on the road, you know, they get the news that they're supposed to be free now. A bunch of them do decide to leave. Jane is among those people. And they were going okay for a while. Um, they found a deband an abandoned barn or something in the forest and they decided to hold up there for the night. Uh, the leader of their group, she had um, flint and iron stone. So she was making using them to make a fire for them. And she was kind of the mother figure and, of the group. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, she was been pretty much strong the, yeah. as well. I'm not saying the mothers are, but I'm saying physically strong. Yes, yes, and that and that's what it was. And James specifically said, actually, you know, she was in charge because you know she was she was strong as any man, and you know, and I think she meant physically and as well as uh. Yeah, and I, I, so, and I think yeah. her name. I'm looking it up right now. Was Big Laura? Yes, yes, I, I, that's I, I think. That sounds about right. Which, and you know, the, the, she ahead, was. She was taking care was, of a baby and everyone else. It, yeah. She, and, she, and she let's was just say it, she was a badass. Um, yeah. She was. She <laughs> yeah. was. She did. She did not take no shit at all. You know, yeah. while they're in that barn, they get attacked by you know some random punk ass uh, bandits, white folks, of course, and they kill pretty much everyone, even the little baby. Seriously, the little baby was like maybe a month old, and they killed that child, Jane, and uh, Big Laura's oldest son. Um, was it Ned? Ned. Yeah, yeah, Joe, yeah, yeah, Ned and, and Jane are the only two that survived, and that's because they hid, they hid and stayed quiet for hours, even it looked like after um, daylight had come, and that's when they came from behind their fighting spot. And Jane saw the carnage, she uh picked up the stones so she so she'd be able to make fire to keep them warm on the days to come, and she takes a little boy by the hand, I think he was only maybe five or six at the time and she basically yeah. becomes his mother at, at the age of 12. yeah and i think it's also worth note that uh nothing was stolen everyone's packs were still there yeah so they didn't like yeah. take the food or anything they were just there to kill they people just, of color yeah they just wanted to kill black folks and that was yeah. horrible and even after that you know i'm sure it bothered her a lot and that's a horrific thing to go through and see as a child but jane kept her head strong and she made sure that little boy was okay you know and she, she didn't even try to take him anywhere before asking him what he wants to do i'm going to ohio do you want to come with me and he's like yeah so she makes him a little pack you know she gives him those two stones that his mama used to use and said you hold on to these that's your job while we're going here you make sure they get to ohio the same time we do and from there is where her true journey actually starts you know she they do end up going to the Mississippi, getting in the right direction, unfortunately, beforehand. And this is what I was referencing earlier with, um, you know, how, how backwards it is with uh, people thinking uh, the, the randomness that they do. They come upon this uh, little homestead and dogs barking at them. White lady comes outside and starts yelling at them for being near her fence. And Jane is like, you know what? I right, cool. I'm not going to argue. C can you just please tell me if I'm close to a, a water source, a lake, a river or something, you know, me, me and this little boy, we're real thirsty. And she starts again, cutting up at him and whatnots. And Jane's basically at the end, she's just like, I just wanted to know if we were yeah. going in the right direction. That's all you had to do. I wasn't trying to come in to mess with you. I was about, I was backing away from your gate already, but you know what? Never mind. And then she, the woman says, all right, well, well, wait a second, wait there. And she goes inside. She does come out with a little cup of water. But Jane goes to grab the cup. And she's like, hold on. 
<laughs> Jane goes to grab the cup and the woman jerks her hand away. Like, you think I let you soil this cup with your filthy Negro mouth? And I'm like, ew. And she, she says, you know, hold out your hands. So they basically, they both get like two handfuls of water from her. And then she goes into this completely way left conversation talking about, I can't stand all of you black folks. It's your fault that my husband and son are dead. They got killed in the war and blah, blah, blah. And it wouldn't have been no trouble like that if it wasn't for y'all. Well, yeah, it wouldn't have been no trouble like that if y'all, if your ancestors would have just left us the fuck alone on, on the uh, country and land far, far away from you. <laughs> we both we yeah. both could have avoided this problem, ma'am. You how, how do you blame the people Not that are oppressed? But yeah, yeah ch children at least, right? Two kids that know nothing hardly about anything that's going on right now, and you're trying to put that hate on their shoulders. I understand you're grieving, and yeah, war are wars are bloody nasty things, but that's not those two kids' fault. It, it's not even any uh, any black folks' fault that's in the country. It, the, the problem lies with you and your folks and y'all were wrong and you can only do things to people for so long before they start bucking back. And that's not just with black folks. That's with anyone. That's just, yeah. that's the truth of the matter. And it's I a, think that level of anger yeah. especially comes from one losing and two mm -hmm. from fighting for an unjust cause. You know, mm -hmm. there was a lot of anger about from veterans that came back from Vietnam because it was why, why were we doing this? And, yep. you know, fighting for slavery was an unjust cause. So I think that, you know, a lot of it was racism, but also a lot of it was uh, in the end, you know, they were not fighting for something that was important and needed. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and I hate people always will make the argument about economics. Like, well, that was how that was the basis of the Southern economy. Well, Find put another together way. a more stable economy. You yeah. shouldn't rely on owning people to run your economy. If you rely on free labor, then you are no good businessman at all. Exactly. And and we also see that whenever they're freed in the ranch and everything. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's this idea where he's like, well, you know, I can't pay you anything because I don't have anything. You know, those they they yeah. the troops took everything. It's like, really? You don't have anything. You have a whole plantation. How you, you still running this whole ass plantation? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then whenever they leave, they're leaving, they're giving them, you know, a little bit of rations of food and huge, you know, barrels full of potatoes and everything. Really? You don't have anything? And I <laughs> just, it was so uh, absolutely rich watching the, you know, um, the, uh, the woman being all tearful the mistress of about the house. Thing yeah. about, it's is, like, yeah, you really cared mm -hmm. about them. Yeah, that's exactly what my thought was like this, this bitch was actually sitting there kissing babies and crying. And as mean as we saw her be to Jane in the beginning, I have to assume that's how she always was. She yeah. went up and actually gave Jane like a kiss and her hug and look all worried like people were leaving. Bitch, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where were you? Yeah. How, how, how does you having that emotion even make sense? I, I just yeah it it's it's and horrible. if they cared so much they would try and find a way to book them to safe pay passes. them and keep them yeah. there yeah and then that's another thing or that too that, um, yeah to actually give them a wage so they'd be safe and yeah. actually free yeah, it's, yeah and, that's and, one thing that was very prevalent throughout this film is showing mm -hmm. the uh, how sort of self deluded um, mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. across the different generations you know ha have been about. Uh, you know, them being kindly uh, yeah. and, you know, doing things that they perceive to be, you know, oh, we're being nice and, you know, and mm -hmm. all that. Yeah. When it it really... reminded me of that line in Hidden Figures when she says, really, I've got nothing against y'all. Like, yeah. thanks. <laughs> but <laughs> six is yeah. everything. <laughs> mm hmm. Yeah, it's it's just crazy. And there's actually maybe one or two more times um, similar situations happen as we go through the story. Um, did, yeah. did you want to go ahead and move on from there? Uh, yeah, so... Um, okay, so we talked about the, the woman they run into, and then shortly after that, the, they do find their way to uh, the other plantation, right? Or am I... Skipping there, over they, they, there's the Mississippi, and there's that that black man that helps them. Yeah, okay, you're yeah. right. That was an interesting yeah. scene. And that notice was. his mannerisms and tone totally changed when there were white people. He was all yes sir and no mm -hmm. sir, and 
It, and did. it had to be because you know it's you it, don't want to welcome vi they you know, easily, the violence. Yeah, they easily could have gotten all killed. Um, but what was really significant about that guy that I really liked, and I'm, I'm sure some folks may not have understood it. And I think when I, if I remember to my childhood when I first saw that, I didn't understand why he made them get out the wagon, but it was because I, I think he he wasn't planning on taking them you know somewhere they can get some money to cross the ship. He was planning on taking them back to where he was still living and that plantation. And he told them to get out because, nah, y'all babies don't need to be around that. So clearly, to me anyways, okay. there was still some bad things happening there and he was trying to keep them away from getting there. That's how I read it as well. So he yeah, so he made them there. get out. Yeah, he realized yeah. they were better off striking it out on their own than yeah. I, I admit, I admit that did actually confuse me a little bit. Yeah. I, I didn't quite it was understand very subtle. what was going you saw on there. Yeah. And the way he was subtle. so insistent that they get out, you're like, I thought he was the nice guy, but it, it he is doing something nice. It's kind of like mm -hmm. you know, and I forget which movie it is though, where or or you could say Arya, right? Make, making Nymeria go away. Don't you know you're not wanted anymore? Yeah. Like it looks yeah. like they're being mean, but they're trying to save you know the creature or the person that they're they're making go away. Right, exactly. You can tell by the look on his face. He he's dreadfully worried for them because he knows two little kids, you know, especially one being a girl, do not need to be walking around in the woods by themselves down south. I mean, don't don't do that anyway. Even in today's day and age, PSA, y'all is dangerous. <laughs> um. But he, he thinks them being out there is better than being on the plantation where he works. And I think that speaks volumes. And they did go, but um, Jane ended up finding another plantation that um, had, you know, still had a good amount of uh, black workers. So she decided to try to sign on there and take whatever little bit of pay and shelter she can get for her and the kid. And you know she decides that she'll make her way to Ohio later. But she does say that I didn't realize when I got there that it would take me 12 long, hard years to leave. Which is just heartbreaking. I'm, I'm listening to that. I'm, I'm like, keep going, run. <laughs> don't, don't stop there. <laughs> right. But by the time you got to think, they only had that one sack yeah. of vegetables. They're probably dangerously running low. Yeah, and they haven't had a whole lot of water either, so that it just makes it even worse. You know, she had to do something, and while it did suck for the situation, I mean, she she woman up and she she did what she had to do. Yeah, and that and to put that again, she's only like twelve when this is happening. And so, I was also, uh, you know, that when they didn't have the money for the ferry, he said it was a nickel each, so that mm. would be ten cents in like eighteen sixties seventies. I mean, and it I, wasn't I, hard I, to get. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean with inflation and was... everything, that could have been like $50. I don't know. I know there's the online calculator, but yeah. I think it only yeah. goes back to the early 1900s. Um, but it would have been, that was a mm. lot of money then. A lot. Um, like you yeah. notice whenever, for example, whatever Jane Pittman is, is, she sent the note and it says there's $3 in here. And she gets excited to open the envelope. Nope. Like $3 was a lot of money back then. And that's why it was stolen. Yeah, and that's why it wasn't there. That's why it was stolen. Yep. Yeah. And I'm, I, I'm, I'm in sound of mind to say that it was probably the head of the plantation that took it because why else you know, she, she don't need she don't need that money. Yeah, that's the way they saw it. Yeah. And it's it's horrible. Yeah, and the, horrible. And the head of that plantation was also a, a general or something in the Confederacy, right? A damn or, senile, yeah, man quickly going senile in, in his old Yeah, wearing age. his uniform or crazy, right, crazy. Right, he's there, cuckoo there for was, cocoa puffs. It's like when, yeah, when they uh, mm -hmm. talk about right, him, third which, John uh, <laughs> talk about him wearing, the, you know, the uniform. I was like, can I just reach through this TV and, and smack the shit the out of this guy? Yeah, mm -hmm. Seriously, it's it's oh, so man. ridiculous. Um, she does though. Um, it, again, end up working. Yeah, you know, it, it doesn't show that there were a whole lot of uh hard hardness going on there, but. You know, they move along in the years and around when she's, what, 20, 21, I think maybe. Um, Ned has grown up. You know, he, he's a smart boy. He's, he's noticed um, that, you know, he, he, he likes to read and, and whatnot. And he starts trying to actually help the community. And Jane finds out that there is a, a, a contract basically on his head. And the guy that they got to play that role, 
I know he he's supposed to be portrayed as a bad person, I think, but when you look at the facts, he was basically just like an early form uh, hired assassin. Like that that was his job. You know, he was told to kill black folks. It, well, no, wait, 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 yeah. Later. I, I, I mixed up the boys because she's had two sons. Ned was her yeah. son, and then there's another boy that's born later. So, yeah, I mixed those two up just yeah. now. I'm sorry. So, I think Jim, Jimmy is the other one, and this is Ned. Yeah. But yeah. Ned is. Yeah, this is Ned but right now. She yeah. she is. She does find out, though, that they are going to um, to kill the KKK, basically, is after Ned. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's forming committees and trying to empower his people, and they're not having that. So, they, they Jane finds out about it. And oof, it's it's horrible when they come looking for him. It really is. And she makes him leave like that next day. Yeah. Because she doesn't want to see him get killed. And I have to say, I found it really fascinating to watch this portion of the film with, you know, like watching, you know, young Ned forming a committee and doing all this stuff. But because it occurs to me that we mm -hmm. see a lot of stories set like during the Civil War, you know, about slavery and stuff but i don't know that i've actually myself and this could be my own sort of limited perspective maybe there has been more made but um but actually seeing you know a, a story that takes place you know you know just a few years you know in this case i guess 12 years later after the mm -hmm. civil war and and seeing things like committees and when you know, the war is still fresh in everybody's minds and it's, you know, watching that period of time and, and watching, um, you know, black Americans actually have to stand up and, and take these big steps early on. I, I found it extremely interesting to watch and, and Ned just comes across as such a brave young man for what he's willing to do. Yeah, I agree. Um, Guilty, you're saying Jimmy is Ned's grandson. I do not believe that's the case. He, Jimmy is the son of, um, what was the lady that was helping her most of the time? I don't remember what her name is. Was it Lee? I thought it was like Cecilia or something. No, I have no idea where that's coming from. <laughs> it it, it might have been Lee, but, but you know, J Jimmy's mom is who... Uh, that person is who the, the person that was helping her in the very beginning with yeah. the interviews who, and all who that. Said that, that she was that her Jane son. didn't have to talk to the interviewer. Yeah. Yeah. That lady. Correct. Yeah. And I, I apologize. I, I should have, I, you know, usually I would have the names written down or something, but as I've only seen this film well, once. Well, and, and she, and I think, seemed now, to so. kind of adopt a lot of young uh, she, she did. She so, she had that yeah. that mother uh, beacon about her, like you know when when she's sitting uh, sometimes by her tree, and you know she had the kids come and you know talk to her and whatnot. You know, one boy reads like the newspapers for her and, and the funnies because she loves the, the the Dick Tracy comics, and she loves baseball. You know, so she so she tries to hear the stats for uh, Jackie Robinson and the the uh, Dodgers because she loves Brooklyn, which is kind of awesome. So let's see, where, where are we now? Um, so while uh, Ned is away, she meets her future husband, mm -hmm. right? I think that's kind of about that's, where that's, we are. Uh, yeah, yeah, she, meet, she meets Pitt, her I husband. Believe. Yes, Which, he is. Go ahead. Just as like, I mean, it's a tragic life it, overall in a lot of ways. Um, this just... <laughs> This section of the story just made me so sad. Not early on. They have a happy life together, but where it's headed just had me like, oh, God, that's so horrible. I had forgotten about it until like the actual scene came up on my rewatch. And I was like, oh, no. Oh, no. And it, it's what, what it happens is Jane's. Um, husband is uh works with horses you know he he and he's breaks them in and i think he helps like trade and um sell for like the main person he works for to different plantations um and i think one of their biggest folks was the plantation owned by uh, where jane was staying and eventually you know they, they start dating you know you can tell that he likes her from from the moment he sees her and they end up getting married um this and, and that's where exactly where I'm at. This picture that John's showing right now. This is where they're talking to the old senile uh, uh, ex-Confederate uh, man 
that owns the plantation about leaving because Joe has gotten a deal, you know, for honest pay for working with horses because he's damn good at it. And he could, they go to talk to this man and this fool is looking at him. Well, you know, it's like he, he's, he makes himself personally the victim. Like, wait, wait, did not treat y'all well. Like, why would you uh, want to yeah. go leave? I mean, everything I've done for you seems like you're being I've kind been of a great grateful. prison guard. Why don't you want to stay in jail? <laughs> It's right. like seriously, so, oh, and, and you know, Joe, Joe keeps it respectful. Hmm? Oh, oh, John's <laughs> I, I, I... <laughs> Joe, yeah, yeah, they they both keep it respectful in how they're talking to him. So when he sees that he's not going to be able to, you know, talk them into uh guilt of leaving, he starts saying, Well, you know, does that matter the $50 you owe me? And they yeah. both looking at each other, like, What? So what I, I'm sorry, the what? The who? Yeah. Like, what do you mean, fifty dollars? So, well, you know, the 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 clan was uh you know roaming around, always asking about y'all, and I, I happened to pay them to make sure that they left you alone. So, you know, you do, do you think that you're safe to travel around just because you supposed supposedly supposed to be free? No, 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 no. That's not how it works. I made sure that you were safe, so you owe me now since you're gonna leave. And you know, there's really nothing else to be said after that. They walk away. The next time we see them, they are selling all of the possessions that they do not need to take with them, and they end up getting the money. So they come to him. Including his yeah. most prized horse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joe had to give up his his most prized horse, not a horse that he was just always using. That was his, and the shot and the cool ass shotgun that he yeah, had. Yeah, like, shotgun was cool. Like two things that you honestly really needed <laughs> to and get it was around a nice back then. It went for seven dollars. So seven dollars. Yeah. Then that that must have been an, a really good that yeah firearm. that that was a yeah. real sharp. It's like I know this wasn't an option, but like they they had a shot of you know the shotgun he's looking at it, and in my head, even though like I said, I realized this w definitely was not an option given the mm -hmm. realities. But I'm like, just grab that shotgun and shoot that bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, yeah, you know what? That that honestly would have been an interesting. Yeah, I would have liked for him to go Chaco on them. Honestly, <laughs> it's horrible. But you know, even after they get the money, he he looks at them, and you know, as they're approaching, he's like, you know, we we got the money here for you. Oh I yeah, and out Jane's ready. Sure of course. Um, and I forgot yeah, about that. The, uh, so now, easy. supposedly, supposedly, um, that there, there's interest on the fifty dollars now. So yeah. he sees he he he. There, his first plan was thwarted. So now we got to come up with something loose. And Jane don't even skip a beat. She pulls off her wedding ring like here, and Joe tries to stop her. Like you know that that's you know our our the semblance of our marriage. That's your wedding ring. And she says no. That's our freedom. So yeah. twice this woman has been freed. One by law, and then even after that, she had to buy freedom yeah. for her and her husband. It's 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 freaking nuts and heartbreaking, but it's also kind of uh, w w warm hearted because that's how you knew they really were set on being together and living a happy life. They weren't going to get that staying where they were. So they made their way to the new plantation. Um, they, they their workers were intermixed a lot. That I, I saw you know white folks that were working that didn't look like they were part of the family. Um, there were some Native Americans even in there and uh then other black folks I think it was, they, they actually held like rodeo shows there yeah and they had yeah. that scene like, where she saw uh, she saw a native american man and like yeah. did a double take uh yeah, so it's right. possible she, she had never even seen that before seen, yeah. I, I, yeah i don't think she would have ever seen yeah. that before and, and i thought that was such a genuine human reaction like it's a little blip in the whole grand scheme of things but it, you can tell why she would look like that yeah so i, I found that was very interesting the way they played that role yeah, and they get to this, yeah, and it's basically, uh, you know, a ranch that focuses on raising rodeo horse and training rodeo horses. Mm -hmm. And that's where uh, the movie stopped. Yep, and well, that's... <laughs> and nothing bad ever happened Happily again. ever after. Nothing bad ever <laughs> happened. She grew old and grateful, and they lived happily ever after. In scene. <laughs> oh, but sadly, no. No, no, that was not the case. She, she had, I think they had a good couple years there. Um, Joe was actually what would they say they called him Captain Breaker because that that was the the title of their job they were breakers any new horses come in they would break them and Joe was the best so that's why he was the one in charge of the whole thing he finds a white horse and really this horse did look uh, 
a little bit evil. It looks a little scary. Um, and behold, a pale lie. horse. I was like, oh, it, shit, it's that Revelations. Is exactly. That is exactly what I thought. <laughs> like, I was like, runs, oh, so no wonder. Away. You know, no wonder she got a chill. She said when oh she first came out, she had a chill oh, up her spine. And she like, knew the, the, it this, was bad. This happened, though, and I'm like, at first, I'm like, I feel sorry for this horse. It's like, it's not. I actually thought it was the interesting. It was, a little bit of a, it was a little bit of what we see in fantasy a lot, which is a self-fulfilled prophecy. Yeah. She mm -hmm. tried to let the horse go because she thought it would kill him. Because of that, he runs after the horse. The horse kills him. And yeah, so, the horse dies and he's he's drugged back to the the place by the horse yeah which is really really kind of crazy because the, the 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 rope was wrapped around i believe i was thinking of the mechanics of it. i think it's just poetic license i think and it, see it ended up being on joe's leg too you know so you might be inclined to think that somebody you know tied that together but the way they played it, I don't, I don't think that was ever something that came across anybody's mind. Yeah, I think that's what it was supposed to be. But when I when I saw it, I thought that it was that, that someone had killed prophecy. him, tied him to the horse, and you know, smacked the horse in the butt toward the ranch, and actually, because he probably went off of the property of the ranch in order to find that horse, and he oh, wasn't yeah. safe anymore. So you could I, just take I, it as the horse somehow killed him, but I kind of took it as some racist kill him. I don't know. I'm not it sure what, I think been, the movie wants it to be a little bit ambiguous. Perhaps. Ambiguous, yeah. I mean, you, you got to think, if he fell the right way, it could happen. Like, if he was trying to catch it, and it, the, instead of going around his neck, it landed on the ground. And if he might have gotten pulled off, it could have gotten caught in his leg falling out. I so, think, I, I don't I know, think, it's possible, but mm, I, I think, think it was just the I worst. think either way, the end result is the same, and... Uh, yeah, you know, and it's this idea that if she hadn't let the horse go, it's you know self fulfilling prophecy, as Amy said, which mm -hmm. kind of turns the movie into a horror movie for a split second. Yeah, um, horror, isn't it? A horror I mean, I mean, yeah, the whole thing really is a horror movie. I, that that's, I mean, yeah, yeah it, it's, I, I mean, sort of conventional horror, you mm -hmm. know, sort of the the thing we see in uh, quote unquote horror genre. Uh, yeah. films um, I, uh, where, where it just really about, creeped me out. But yeah. I don't know about y'all, but I the whole time was bracing myself for possibly some um, sexual violence against Miss Pittman uh, being a young yeah. girl on the road. Uh, I, I, was, I am glad they never took that route. <sighs> yeah, I, I was I, very worried about that. I was definitely preparing myself to kind of um, to to have to uh, to be a little a little bit triggered by that. Um, but mm -hmm. you know, yeah. You know, it, it's I, also sorry. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. It, it's also uh, noteworthy, I think, um, that before she actually let the horse go, Jane had went to um, a what, what? What? What would she be called? <sighs> the the negative doctor? term would be a voodoo witch doctor, but I hate that because yeah. it's, it's such a derogatory term used by white people. So I would say maybe a voodoo yeah, practitioner. Yeah, fortune teller. For, yeah, fortune, fortune teller. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, she, she went to her and told her what the situation was. And this woman must be the real deal because you can tell she lives pretty uh, lavishly. You know, even has like specific face paint and whatnot with her fine clothes and all. I mean, okay, but then there's the point where it's like, you know. <laughs> but then there's payment. where people, <laughs> well, people make things happen just because it's planted in their subconscious that it could happen. And Jane, you know, when, when she tells the story and she starts to do her little spell and whatnot, like the candle blows out and cold wind blows in and it scares Jane. That's not everything, though. She says, well, you know, if you want to leave, you can now. And Jane's like, no, tell me everything, because if he really is in danger, I need to be able to try to protect him. And that's, and that's when we see her the next morning early. She gets up and she sets the horse loose. And I think she was trying to do it unnoticed, but, you know, Joe does hear it. And he comes out and, you know, goes after. And then next time we see him, he's dead, which really, really sucks. Like, you can tell how, how much that broke her spirit in the scenes after. And it, it hurt everyone, actually. Because, you know, while the shows did go on, they got another captain put in. Joe was very well liked and loved with all of those people that were on that plantation that did the radio shows. Every time now, after... Um, Joe died. Every time there's a show or something starting, they take a moment of silence to honor him. 
every to every show, but like not something just to mourn around the anniversary of his death or anything. No, they respected that man that much. And Jane says, you know, there was never another man that compared to him. That's why my name is still Pittman. Had three other lovers after that, told him from Jump Street, you ain't this guy, so don't expect me to take your name. That's just how it is. Yeah. She had no fucks about it. Yeah, Lady Starfall, she and she takes a lot. It's, I mean, mm -hmm. if this <laughs> movie showed anything, it's like, this is one resilient woman. Because I, I just, like, my heart kept getting broken over and over <laughs> for her. Right. It's, yeah, and I actually think one interesting aspect of this movie, too, uh, and her story in general, is that she cannot have children, um, physically cannot have children. And I, I actually think that's slightly a blessing because she's, especially if she had had a son, she sees what happens, to, what happened to Ned, what happened to Jimmy, that, you know, raising, um, you know, a son of color in, in this world, especially <laughs> around these times, I mean, these times it's it's dangerous today but you know had she had you know she would have probably seen her sons die as well um not yeah. just her adopted sons so even though i'm sure she would have loved to have had uh children with with mr Pittman, mm -hmm. um or her other you know future partners um i actually think it in some ways did save her even more pain yeah. and hardship it's i mean if you, you think they were poor just those that those two i mean having children would have made it even harder to, you know, buy their freedom, move from place to place, mm -hmm. feed and clothe everyone. Yeah. And I, I do want to say, yeah, I, I just, you know, said that, um, you know, she's a very resilient woman and she goes through a lot so much that it was constantly, you know, breaking my heart. But I, I also think that that's a, you know, that's very much, that's kind of the point of the, the story and, and showing what things have been for for black americans and it's this sort of need for resilience and pressing on which is what i think we're not at the end yet but i think that's kind of what that uh, uh symbolizes of that there's no like there hasn't been a happy ending where everything's been solved it, it, it's these terrible things keep happening and and all that can be done is to continue pressing forward, um, sadly. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I actually want to stop right here for a second because we are going to do the mid roll this <laughs> this week. Do, I, do you want I, me I to do my disclaimer? I won't <laughs> skip this over. is the mid roll. There's more content. Please uh, keep listening. <laughs> all right, we're good. Go yeah. ahead, John. We're not done yet. Um, okay, so uh, we've been talking about it. This is kind of the end of an era for us. Uh, cinematic Realms is making the move over to podcast form, but you will continue to see the videos uh, here on John Webster Film. It just won't be live, and it'll basically be a filmed podcast. So it'll be a little different, but um, but hopefully you guys will still enjoy it all the same. Uh I, I know Amy and I have been chomping at the bit to get started on doing it next week. We're going to basically be doing an introduction episode, um, you know, <laughs> you know, in the hope that if somebody new is listening <laughs> to the podcast or watching, they'll, uh, you know, get to know us and uh, we'll talk a bit about what we have planned so forth and so on. But then the week after that, we're going to do our first official discussion, which will be on the wizard of Oz because where else could we start? Yeah. Um, and we start at the beginning. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Uh, and we got a lot of stuff uh, planned in, you know, the coming months. Um, Amy has us planned all the way out till I think June. So it uh, looks like May, but you know, I do already have some ideas for June. So he's the, the, the keeper uh, uh, of the wolf schedule. Yes, yeah. I am. Um, and we actually do have quite a number of guests lined up for about the first month or so. We're probably going to uh, sort of slow down on that a little bit because I think Amy and I both want to work on sort of establishing the podcast for a while on uh, on our discussions back and forth. But we will still we'll still have guests on, just maybe not quite as often. Um, yeah, I'll be posting the links and stuff on um, 
on Twitter and obviously we'll, we'll still have the videos up here. So we will also post the links to the yeah, actual we are podcast going to be in on, the description. Yeah. We're going to be on anchor, which is going to disseminate our RSS feed. Basically anytime we upload something new, it's going to automatically upload into about seven platforms. So that's how you get it on Apple podcasts, Spotify, Google podcasts. Um, there's all sorts of different ones. We will also go ahead and do it on Podbean as well, in case you are a Podbean listener. So we'll do that separately, yes. but we're going to make sure that we're on all major podcast platforms. And as always, you can find us here if you want to watch the video. But yeah, if you are a podcast listener, you want to be doing chores or driving, you know, we're here to be in, fill your ear with beautiful cinematic thoughts. Um. And, uh, you know, and I'm just looking forward to it because, um, you know, when Amy and I have our uh, friendly debates, she's not going to be able to lean on the support of the chat to turn it down. Neither are you, John. Debates, <laughs> <laughs> he said. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, it's going to be a blast. I'm I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, just because, I mean, yeah, obviously, I, I've gotten better uh, talking in front of people over the course of doing Here Be Dragons and doing this, but uh, I'm still a very sort of shy person by nature. So I, I think it's going to be neat to just do these discussions where I don't have to worry about my stage fright. Um, I also kind of like my Saturday nights back. <laughs> be nice. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, yeah. Can, can, can I do a shameless plug real quick? Yeah, absolutely. Mid-rolls yeah. are not for plugs, AK. How dare you? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. All right. And it's really not for me, um, but you were speaking about all the platforms you're going to go on, and Podbean is the one I use. Um, if you could highlight what uh, OCDA just said, yeah, uh, Living My Rhapsody, lady that made my awesome earrings, it does a show with uh, Tony Teflon on there called The Lady and the Don, and they usually get up to some good conversation. So check them out. Good stuff. Yeah, uh, I wasn't on Podbean, and and I posted my anchor link, and uh, in a Discord somewhere, and someone had said, "Are you on Podbean?" And I was like, "No, no, 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 no. Now I am. There you go. Here's the link. <laughs> it's really easy. Once you have that RSS feed from Anchor, you just copy and paste it to everywhere, and it and it does it for you. So, don't worry, John. I got this. I'll I'll make sure Cinematic Realms is everywhere. <laughs> Excellent. Um, what do you got yeah. going on tomorrow over at Here Be Dragons, John? Um. I don't have anything going on over there. Uh, Steven will actually be doing another episode of I Know That Nerd. Um, it'll be at 6 o'clock. And he is doing it with, oh, who's that person? It's uh, Nasai. That one I, girl from across the street. Um, oh, wait, that's Nasea? right. That, that's right. It's my sister, Nessie. How could I, how could I forget? Um, yeah, Nessie will be Steven's guest uh, on there. Uh, he already had me on, so it's only f obviously fair that he has the far more interesting co-host um, on uh, for a discussion. So go ahead He's and check that out. He's also had me, the baby dragon, on as well. So Yeah. Yeah, it was okay. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not in the cool kids club yet. No, it, if Stephen, if you catch this, uh, you, I'm sure think, you're on the short list, AK. I think you're being called out, Stephen. You need to have AK <laughs> on. No, no, not at all. I, I <laughs> joke. I joke. I kid. <laughs> I'm not. Um, <laughs> all right, Amy. Uh, let's see. always right when the sirens come. When it's like your turn, Amy. And um, we can we can spare about just, twenty. It just, we, we, it just we can, went a little bit further down Michigan Avenue, so we're good. So uh, we can <laughs> we can spare about twenty minutes. So go ahead, Amy. This yeah no. Do you have do you have forever? These are all of my links. I have my YouTube channel. Once again, you can find me on Acre and on Podbean. I. And just got an email that I should be up on Apple Podcasts within the next couple of weeks. So I will definitely tweet out when that happens. Um, and my blog is aswafchineselit.wordpress.com. Um, I have some stuff coming up. My fourth episode of Buddy Banter, which is a monthly-ish. I say pseudo-monthly, but it has been actually monthly. I'm not like Maester Monthly. Uh, throwing some shade. Anyway, um, uh, so... This buddy banter is going to be with Yogi. He has uh, a channel slash podcast all through the moon door. And he really likes Kung Fu Panda. So we're going to talk about the trilogy of Kung Fu Panda. And we're going to talk about dumplings and martial arts. And it's going to be fun. Um, so that, that will be sometime in March. Uh, please follow me on Twitter 
and you will figure it out. If you don't use Twitter, you can easily subscribe to my channel and then hit that little bell and it will let you know when I'm going live. I love how far reaching the, the buddy banter is. I literally in, was like, in, in pick terms a of topic. Ra <laughs> range, of, range of topics. It, anything it's, you want to do. It's, I, I mean, come unless on, it's like we should be sacrificing children to volcanoes, like I haven't nixed a topic yet. So it's, it's like I come on for the first one. I, I talk about like gender stereotypes and, you know, in the media we watch. And then, uh, you know, and, and then you've got Mike coming on to talk about D, DC on film television. And now yeah. Yogi is talking about. Yeah. And then Logan uh, wants to talk about Kung politics and fantasy, and, which was really heated and fun to talk about yeah and now yeah. we're gonna talk about kung fu panda so that's gonna be really fun i i literally i said like when i started that series i said okay like whatever my buddy wants to banter about is gonna be it i have not said no mm -hmm. to a single topic nice. um so my song of ice and fire content that i have coming up is mostly gonna be two episodes i have planned which is one about black and white slash yin and yang symbolism and i'm gonna have this guy named bronze Terry's on he's all right uh, and then I have another one about um, comparing Mulan to Danny Flint and um, Alara slash Sorella, this kind of idea of dressing as a man um, and moving in a masculine space. I'm going to have Lo on once again, more Lynx fire content coming at you. I'm going to have Lo the Lynx on. Um, nice. And they are currently working on an essay about the Night of the Laughing Tree and Leona Stark. So we're gonna, it's going to be a cross-dressing extravaganza. We're going to have a really good time. Um, and then I have his dark materials. I have a couple things. I'm going to write about Mary Malone. I'm also going to write about Mrs. Coulter. Lo is coming on for that as well because I can't get enough of them. And this is an official announcement. That was my drum roll. I'm doing X-Men content finally. So I am having the lovely Jaded Redhead, a.k.a. Kelly, on to talk about the comics. And we are going to do them by saga, uh, not necessarily chronologically. So we're going to start out with the Phoenix Saga. If you're not a comics reader, you can still listen and enjoy. We are going to talk, you know, we're going to give you like comics 101. So if you've never picked up an X-Men comic in your life or never clicked on one and, um, and uh, you know, online, don't worry. We're going to tell you all about X-Men. It's going to be really fun. And I might do some content on the animated series as well, but I'm going to start out with the comics. Um, so yeah, if you are an X-Men fan, an X-Fan in any way or capacity, then that's what I'm going to be doing. I was not aware that you guys were X-Men fans. Yeah, we're we're just a little bit obsessed. <laughs> Not that much. It's the shiz, man. Uh, right? When, when I so think excited. of X Men, the damn theme song from the '90s automatically jumps into my head. I I keep telling you, like, when, when they <laughs> yeah. uh, when they officially start the MCU X Men films, if they don't open the at least the Marvel logo with the. <laughs> animated X Men theme behind it, I'm gonna riot because you uh, need to work that in in some form. I said the same damn thing. You show <laughs> show me a cool backstory intro, and then as soon as you fade the black for the main credits and start of the movie, I need to hear. <laughs> okay, we don't want to get copyright written. I don't know if hubbing counts, but we don't want a copyright violation. Um, but yeah, so you can find my leaks below. Um, and please subscribe to my channel and follow my podcast uh, and follow me on Twitter. I'm also Amy Poehler. That's P-O-L-L-E-R. I like to poll. Polls are fun. Please answer my polls. Boy, there's so many puns. And if you, on in that one. if you don't... <laughs> Not dancing on poles. I like facilitating. Poles. I'm just saying. I'm just. I mean, at this also, point, when we were talking about The Witcher, everyone was like, be, "Oh, I, Amy likes poles. That's why she likes The Witcher, like Polish people." And I was like, "I can't get away from this." You did it, man. You walked right into that one. Now you got to live really with that. I really did. I walked right into that like a pole. It's I like mean, Tony Stark. It's not going away. I just found out that you did like, you know, Bollywood stuff on stage. So, uh, so, true. so the, uh, so, you know, if you were a pole dancer, not as surprising. I mean, as, <laughs> it, 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 <laughs> oh God. Uh, I mean, yeah, I did do, I did do Bollywood dance here. I'm going to hear chat. Enjoy. You can, you can find it on Twitter. I have posted some pictures. Yes. Of me. And, and, and um, she, she looks quite stunning in, in a lot of those costumes, man. So kudos right. to you for learning the, for learning the art, Amy. Yeah. I, I haven't done it in a while, but I really, really <coughs> enjoyed it. Um, here I am. I like, I was like, Whoa, the whole time, but yeah, I have, I, uh, for about four years, I, I did Bollywood dance. I also really like wearing saris. So, you know, that's how it is. That's awesome. That's totally awesome.
But yeah, so you will, can follow will. me on Twitter. You can see all the pictures of me doing Bollywood dance. So, and, so, yeah. so many polls. They make you pun and pun. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> oh man, trademark pole dancer. <laughs> okay, Timo, that don't even surprise me <laughs> at all. Yeah, there you go. Not a pole dancer. I'm a dancer who also <laughs> facilitates poles. <laughs> oh uh, boy! Uh, all right, and 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 this is the content you can expect. <laughs> yep. <laughs> this, this Congratulations! Nice professional cinematic discussions over here at Cinematic Realms. So. Yeah, con congratulations, chat room. All of that is in your head now, and it will not go away. You're welcome. <laughs> but if I did pull dance any song, it would be the X Men animated series theme. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> it can be done. Yeah, I'm thinking of choreography in my head right now. <laughs> Don't don't lie. I know you also have some uh, Ariana music queued up, Amy. Don't lie. Oh, please break up with your friends because I'm bored. I've already got the like, you know. I've already you know, got it down. I, I, and you I know like how she Ariana, has the high pony. But, mm. She has the high pony. I'm the ponytail girl. So we both we each have our like hair kind of things going on. Yeah, I loved her when she was on Victorious, and she does make some decent uh, bops in the music She's got scene some bops. now. But I watched her on Victoria. Yeah, there's some problematic things with her. But man, <laughs> it's, it's, it's nothing that would make me ignore her completely. So, yeah, I am. Say, so, I love you. You do dumb shit when you're in that business. That's what has to happen. Yeah. Um, so, okay. I, unless anybody else has something they want to plug, we can uh, jump back um, in. Well, them. let me check my sticky. I think I plugged everything. <laughs> okay. Oh, think, oh, um, AK. Uh, yeah, there it is. One more thing. I we to told you about our Lord and Savior, the Poppy War. The Poppy War. Have I mentioned the Poppy War? Please read it. Yes, there we go. <laughs> Thank you, John. <laughs> Please read the Poppy War by R.F. Kong. Amazing fantasy. There you go. Yes, yes, indeed. Okay. Uh, I, I mean, I, I am, I am, um, I am being paid by Kong. So you know, like, if I forget, I lose a couple thousand dollars. So you know, I got to. Yeah, don't it. do that. Yeah. Uh, the, the only thing I have to plug is, and we haven't picked the date just yet, but if you go on to uh, Monaro Geek TV's uh, channel, click sub and let that bell ring, then you'll find us in a couple weeks or so talking uh, in the, I think the final uh, series we're doing on the Lannister Brothers. Um, I believe we have a uh, Tyrion as the main topic of discussion on this one. And then we're going to move on to the Starks. Oh, nice. So I'm looking forward to it. Yes. Oh, that's going to be fun. And as everyone knows, who who knows me well, I I love Tyrion and have absolutely no problems with his views on women. So, so that's good which stuff. Which Tyrion? Which Tyrion we talking about? Guys, <laughs> yeah, all, all, book Tyrion. All, all, all and because because I'm side eyeing you on book Tyrion, ma'am. <laughs> all, all, all she chat. All she does is go on and on about how perfect Tyrion is. Yeah, that he has how, no flaws. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, will we be covering the, the Fire and Blood series when it comes out? That's a good question because, well, first of all, it's still a ways away, but also I'm positive that uh, there will uh, that I'll be doing coverage uh, over mm -hmm. on Here Be Dragons mm -hmm. with that. I don't think we would let that slide by, but as you know, I mean, I also don't know if I'll be able to resist, you know having it on the podcast and having us talk about it because Amy, you and I have never really gotten to do any uh, Game of Thrones related discussions. Not uh, at all. And you know, I live and breathe the Targonist. So I cannot, I couldn't imagine uh, not doing anything that's all about the Targs. Uh, so yeah. Well, can, and I can, actually can, fire and blood at volume one is my favorite of all the books. So let, 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 let me, let me get at, uh, let me get out my, uh, my, my fellow mad queen there in, in the damn chat. Timo Lisi sneaking out from the shadows. Screw you, Timo. Okay. A Stark after Lannister. Damn, such a high bar. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> the, okay. So, so you know how you, how you defend Tyrion, Amy, the Timo. It is the utmost uh, Lannister fan, Ugh, and I can't stand her. Shut up. <laughs> uh, it's uh, like, well, here's the, here's the... I have green eyes and blonde hair. Mean, I can't fully hate sarcasm. them. It's like a love-hate relationship. It's because well, yeah, I like Lannister. Because of the hair? Because of the hair. 
Okay, not because of the hair, but here's the thing. Like, okay, the, so the Lannisters are, you know, despicable, but they're really, really fun to read they're and watch. So I'm not yeah. saying that they're not, but but they're not free of all sins. And my Cersei all Lannister houses. episode with Rohan is still my number one most watched and listened. So, you know, their fans bring me bring me listens. What can I do? I mean, I, I, I don't object to that. That's fine. I just don't like when people can't admit that they have done wrong. I love House Stark, but even I will tell you there are flaws. Everybody has blood in their hands. You can't excuse that. That's kind of the whole point of the story. The series, yeah. So, um, oh, okay, so this isn't you know <laughs> Game of Thrones. Oh, strength. you would have a damn Lannister COVID mask. Ugh. Anyways, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, where where did we leave off on the? <laughs> um, we were just after Joe died, so. Okay. You know, you, they don't tell us exactly how much time has progressed, but from from after um, her husband died until where we're at now. But uh, I, I get the gist that it's a few years because she looks older when we see her again. And is that when her um, her son and, returns? And that's yes, and that is when Ned uh, returns home with a wife and a child. And I'm just saying, go ahead. I'm sorry, no, go ahead. I'm, I'm, uh, I was um, gonna say he, go she knew who he was before he even got out the boat. She she was she was uh, I think maybe picking some berries or doing something with laundry. I don't know, but she had a basket, and when she looked over and saw him waving, she's so shocked and extremely happy at the same time. She like drops the basket into the river and doesn't even think about it. She's just waiting for her, her boy to hurry up and pull up to the dock, and it was such a touching moment to see. It's one of those few bright spots that are in the whole story and i really yeah. like that interaction and as a matter of fact if like if there's one <laughs> thing that you know i i i wish for that you know that the film didn't give was i would have liked for it actually to be longer and to you know to be able to dwell in some of these happy moments for a while before we move on <laughs> to the next bout yeah. of tragedy very true uh, yeah, but uh, I, I have to say I really, really uh, liked the uh, the actor who who played um, yeah the, the older Ned. I thought he gave a great performance, mm -hmm. a very powerful one. Like you, you yeah. can see all of the strength of character that her son had in just the way he talks. I mean, honestly, the way he talks is what eventually put him on the Ku Klux Klan's radar in that area. And it's very sad. You know, he, he came in, had a good time, you know, meeting back up with his mom. You know, she cooks a huge, big Southern meal for him and they're sitting there laughing. He's like, I am getting mad because I am full and there is more food to eat. And I have not had good cooking like this in a long time. And that pudding looked good. It did. <laughs> I was like, oh, can I have oh some? God, it looks so tasty. And he had a big bowl of it too. Oh. Yeah, yeah, that it, it looked delicious. And, you know, he starts gathering the folks, you know, he um, ends up uh, building a school because, you know, that that's that was his main training as he was a teacher. And of course, of course, on the first night that they hold classes and, you know, there's also there's young and adult folks there because everyone wants to you know learn how to read, write and all that extra stuff. And and also just hear all of the inspiration, you know, coming in waves from Ned to, you know, stand together and try to make some changes. And outside the window, when he walks back to the front of the classroom, we see two uh, white guys on horseback just sitting there watching. And that's when, you know, we, we get the notion things aren't going to go that bad. And then Jane is seen on a dock uh, fishing with another guy. Um, he, he was the assassin that I was... Uh, that I mixed up earlier. And um, she's like, you know, and they're friends, you know, he's eating at her house, you know, they, they've known each other for several years and he Jane knows what he does, but she doesn't have any beef with the guy. You know, he's not discriminatory in the contracts he's taking. He's gone after white folks and black folks and he's killed a lot of them is what we're told. So while they're fishing, she just looks over like, um, why you always talk about killing so much? And he doesn't skip a beat. He looks like, cause I'm the best. And he's saying you, 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 you I think you kind of want to don't like this guy, but he, he's got a charming aesthetic to himself. Like when he said that line, he reminded me of my cabbie, the main guy I call uh, 
for our cabs here and he's from Argentina. So he still has a very heavy accent and he's a jokester like you wouldn't believe. So I could see that type of personality coming out and the guy, I think his name was Albert. And he catches a fish is like, yo, you cook this fish up for me like you usually do. And um, I'm going to give you some important information. And what he says is he's been talked to by some of the clan leaders about a contract out on her son because they don't like how he has that school there now. They don't like that he holds sermons, you know, by the river and people come and, you know, the black folks come and they listen to him. You know, they want to feel inspired, enlightened and taken care of. And Ned gives them that, uh, that, that, that sense of being strong and being proud of who they are. She tells him to leave again. And it, unfortunately still does not go well. He wants to lead his people. He sees they need him there. So he keeps going. And while they're him and another guy are um, taking lumber back to the park, I think to build something else. I'm not sure what it was. They're working on the schoolhouse. Uh, I oh, think. Yeah, 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 you're right. It, yeah, they needed to do some renovations or something or other. And the guy comes out of the woods, makes them stop, points a shotgun at him. The guy, the guy that um Joe was with, I'm sorry, Ugh, not Joe. The guy that Ned's with, Ned. yeah, is yeah. He he says, you know, I can take him. He only got a double barrel. He gonna need both of them to stop me. He looked like a big muscular dude. He might have been right, but Joe's not gonna let anyone else, you know, get killed for him. So he makes the guy leave, and he gets off the boat, and they start, you know, this random banter. That really amounts to nothing. And Albert shoots him in the knee first. And he said he did that because the clan told him to make sure he crawls before you kill him. And Joe outwardly refused and yelled no at him. That so was, shot him. God, in that the was head. so powerful. Yeah. It was. Like you might have yeah. me down, but no, I'm still not gonna give you the satisfaction. Fuck you. Yeah. No. Yeah. And, and then the second shot was to the chest, and that killed him. And before that, just to rewind a slightly his speech was really, really mm. interesting. And you saw, yeah. you know, the Cajun, the assassin in the background on a boat watching he, him. He was watching. But he, Ned made this this good distinction, and obviously I will not say the word, but he said that there are, you know, the difference between a Black American and an N-word are that the N-word, you know, only cares about themselves, and we need to care about, you know, our, uh, basically our lifting community. all of us up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, obviously I cringed a little bit just because of the word he was using, but, you know, I do listen to rap music, so I do hear it. Um, and so it, he was making an important distinction that I think if you get over the language, you can really enjoy it. You, yeah. You see exactly what he's saying. That he was saying, um, you know, now that we're oh, later, Lady Starfall, <laughs> um, but he was really making this distinction of when we were freed, you know, it the only way that we can actually become free and, you know, become, you know, create our community is to all stick together, basically, yep. is what he was saying. And that his, the school was a part, was an extension of that, of that, you know, um, yes. dream that he had for his community. It was. It's also worth noting <clears throat> before he does get shot on that same day, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, y'all, on that same day, after the sermon, um, he goes and looks at his mom like, I'm going to die, mama. They're not going to intimidate me or make me leave. So it happens. And, you know, it, it's it's another tragedy, another loss for this woman. And it, it it's heartbreaking to see. Yeah. And to think even on the grander scale of how many more people went through that same thing. Horrible, just horrible. Yeah, and yeah. I think his um his insistence on no one else getting hurt and him, you know, like having that other guy continue. He, you know, he really did see fighting for a cause and dying for that cause as his own personal choice, and he didn't want anyone else to get hurt. And that was his final yeah. kindness before, you know, he passed away. And it was really, um. It was, it was, that was probably one of the more touching scenes is when he, obviously when he makes the speech, but then also when he, as a last, as one of his last acts, he saves someone's life basically by telling him to yeah. continue on. Yep. 
It's, it, it's very powerful to see, very moving. But again, it still makes you sad because can, can we not have good and evil? Can, can we do good or can we not have like the extensive evil that goes on every few years in this woman's life? Like it's horrible, you know, absolutely horrible. And again, like John said, she is a very resilient woman because going through that, it, it could break the mind of anyone. Yeah, it's like after that it happens. Like I, I thought it was bad enough when uh, when uh, it's Joe, right? Yeah, when Joe <laughs> dies in the way that he does, but then to to lose her son too, and she's not done losing people at, at that yeah. point, and it's just it's super sad. Uh, yeah. All right, so it, it, after that, um, there's a time jump. Well, a visible time jump, I'll say. I think Jane's around 70 or so, I believe is what she said, and she's um, working at a plantation, the same one that she ended up be being in um, after she moved when Ned returned and whatnot. And she's doing her, what, 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 what does she call it? Her afternoon ride? Or something like that, because she's older, so they don't have her doing a lot of work in the fields anymore. But she still walks around, you know, she, she's got her nice, proper Southern Belle gown on with the umbrella to block the sun. And she's riding a horse, not the regular way that we would know of, but how women were supposed to ride horses back in the day. I'm glad they paid attention yeah. to that little detail. And, you know, she's talking to the folks and then she ends up talking to the guy that uh, owns me. He's like, um, do you want to maybe get a job in the house? And she just looks at him like, um, what you saying? I'm too old to be out here. And he, he don't want to give her no disrespect. He, he was genuinely asking, and, you know, good, good naturedly and trying to look out for her. And he was like, no, 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 ma'am, not at all. So, cause you know, that that's his elder. So he, he's of a mind and at that time of his life to where he wasn't going to, you know, say she couldn't do something that she said she could do, if that makes sense. But they, you know, I think she does end up going in because because he says he wants her to help take care of some kids and that becomes her job cooking and taking care of some kids and <clears throat> she ends up also becoming the umpire for their weekly uh, games of baseball because yeah. like I said earlier she loves baseball and she even says you know I was probably a bit too old to be uh, the umpire because you know my vision wasn't always that great but damn it they made me the umpire and they showed a couple of those scenes. And one of the boys tried to argue with her when she called him out. She just, she just took her hat off like, look, I'm the ump. I said you out. That's it. <laughs> like, it, 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 was, it was another one of those good moments. It was cute to see. Like she even says like with, you know, the family that owned the property and all of the workers that they had, it, it did feel like they were just one big happy family. You know, they, they were treated well there. Ugh, and I love seeing that, but like exactly like John said earlier, I wish we could have seen more of those good times because there, there there seem to be very few as you go through the whole story. Yeah, and I understand yeah. that they wanted to highlight certain parts of her life, but no one's life is struggle every single minute. Even the people mm -hmm. that are the most downtrodden have good times. And so I do think they did try to put those kind of intermittently, but... You know, I think I would have appreciated just a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah, and I think, uh, especially, yeah, it seems like it would have, this would have been a really nice, <laughs> and I'm not criticizing it all because it's, you know, a wonderfully made film and the story is very impactful, but I could have also seen it sitting really comfortably in like maybe a two part miniseries format where. Um, so, so they could have slowed down and uh, and given us more, you know, exploration of, of those yeah, I, kinds I of periods. Also, I do also have to think, though, if maybe she didn't tell the interviewer more, because he only went by yeah. all of the recordings that they had. Yeah. So it you know it's possible that she left those out, or left most of them out on purpose. Yeah, and. Um, and so do we come up then on the uh, the birth of um, 
Yeah, Lee, I believe her name is Lee, Lee's baby. And he's, he's a beautiful child. He had just a little cubby cheeks I wanted to pinch. And what was, I'm trying to remember what his name was. Um, that was Jimmy. Jimmy. Yes, yeah. that, was, that Jimmy. was Jimmy. And if you can recall, you know, when the whole story started, it showed. Yeah, he's in the beginning. Yeah. yeah, and he's in the beginning. He's actually organizing um, a group for one of them to go and um, drink from the white water fountain at the courthouse. Yeah, and specifically he, one of the women thinking uh, yeah, that maybe they were less likely to eat them. Yeah, yeah, because if it, and and he was right, I I believe you know if it was all guys or just one guy that did that, they would get beaten, possibly killed. But if it's a woman, they'll just arrest her. Yeah, and and, and put her in jail for however long they would want to, I guess. And and it, I. I believe, AK, wasn't it right that I think you might have mentioned, but I just wanted to double check that the fountain was in front of the courthouse. Is that correct? Yep. Yep. So it's also right a symbol of, of white power as well, to having this justice system that backs up the racism. Um, yep. Exactly. Was, yeah. So, it, so well, I found that very well, symbolic. And, and it was. Yeah. I think that was done totally on purpose. Here, all this, you know, similar talk we've been hearing in the last couple of movies about, you know, agitators and yeah. throwing up trouble. Yeah. And it's just like it's they're so just awesome. trying to yeah. go drink from a water fountain. Seriously, you and you hear the interviewer driving in his car to and from. Uh, you know, to interview Miss Jane, and you you hear how it was reported, which is that you know Negro agitators out down at the courthouse today have been arrested, mm -hmm. and like yeah, for, for drinking from a water fountain. That's not water. being agitating. <laughs> You're yeah, not agitating anyone Jimmy's except group. racist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Jimmy's group. You know, and a as a baby, when she first held him, you know, she there's a monologue playing um, while they're on the porch, and she's saying, you know, folks uh, look for leaders you know when, when well old folks she says specifically look for leaders in their children and you know they see a new baby born and they look and you know they ask are you the one are you the one are you the one you know she says they did it during uh, make sure i get this right they did it during slavery and during the wall and they are still slash again doing it now and she said she knew when she first looked at jimmy that jimmy would be the one so that's almost a full circle on the story because we met Jimmy in the very beginning while he was uh, planning that demonstration. Yeah. And he asked Miss Jane to be there because he knows how um, heavy her character is known and also respected by a lot of folks in uh, the community. So he wanted their, her there just to help inspire you know, more folks to join the cause for change. Yeah. Not and to mention the narrative of here's a here's a person who was owned who was trying to drink from a water fountain, right? Yeah. This kind of idea yeah. of she was not born free is she still free? She, yeah. Um, great. It was. I mean, if you're just looking at it purely from a journalism perspective, that's a perfect narrative that that writes itself. Mm -hmm. I agree. I do agree. And it's we we bef in the flashback what we'll see is uh, Jimmy when he's around 10 or so. And I, I do think uh, Jimmy really reminded her of Ned. You know, he's at this point in time, a lot of them are being taught to read and write. So Jimmy's learning this from a very young age and you know, his strength of character is already so strong that everybody's looking at him like, okay, we, we see you little boy. Like even the white folks, like it was said about Jimmy, he'll be a credit to that race. Like even they was so, considered a compliment. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you know, e even even the white folks saw and admitted. All right, yeah, J Jimmy might be a good dude. You know, he likes going to school. He likes learning and learn how to read and whatnot. So, you know, he helps teach you know people on the plantation to do the same. And unfortunately, you know, it's it's uh, kind of ridiculous. You know, we see him telling about the comics again he reads her dick tracy comics and they talk baseball and he gave her some like false statistics on something and she called him out she's like boy i was listening to that game don't you sass me <laughs> <laughs> and he's like all right all right nanny you got me you got me <laughs> i was just playing so it, it, again one of those moments where it was very cute to see and eventually there, Jimmy yeah. does grow up and he leaves to get you know higher levels of schooling and by the time he comes 
back, I believe, is when the civil rights movement was really getting started. Yeah, when there were a lot of sit-ins and, you know, kind of um, yeah. demonstrations. And I also think the parallels between Ned and Jimmy are are obvious and they're a part of the movie. Very but I think similar. they're also kind of this commentary on how um, particularly young Black men, um, whether back, you know, whether in the 1800s or in the 1900s are, and now, obviously, um, are, are co constantly kind of seen as enemies by mm. the cops and therefore are unfortunately yeah. um, targets often. Yeah. Um, and this is not at all to discredit Black women. You know, we have Breonna Taylor there, it's and many more, unfortunately. Um, mm -hmm. But it is that the, the cops see, you know, usually in the words agitate or this, they see them as a threat even when they are unarmed and when they are just marching peacefully yeah. or doing a demonstration such as, you know, sitting in the front of the bus or drinking from a water fountain. Or, you know, they even had the pools segregated going through to trying to swim in the white person's pool. I mean, it's, yeah. you know, it, it was the way that it was reported. You know, the media had a lot to do with it. The way that it was mm -hmm. presented by the cops, you know, definitely. And then the just normal everyday white people as well it, it was a constant feedback loop of of you know um distrust toward uh toward bodies of color basically yeah and I, it's also worth noting um well at least for me while jimmy is young and when they're talking about um baseball before the whole thing really starts um he, she looks at him like uh did you do your figures for the day are you done with them? Basically asking about his math homework. So before, you know, there's any fun conversation or fun activity or whatnot, he's, she's making sure, did you do your schooling? Cause I don't want to have to beat your ass right now, Jimmy. Did you do it? <laughs> and for me, like, I don't know how other uh, folks in other races might grow up with their parents. But for me, that was heavy hitting um, because books and reading and learning and all of that was a very, very high thing that my mom and stepdad were on. I mean, so much so that I would get yelled at for school, even when I was like a straight A and B student. I would be sitting, I remember one time I was at my aunt's house reading some lyrics to a Skid Row song and my stepdad comes around the corner out the blue like, hey, you see how you studying that nonsense there? You better do so with your school and, and <laughs> feel like that because he still has a heavy, thick West Indian accent. And I'm looking like, bro, I'm just sitting here, man. Why are you yelling? I didn't do shit. Damn. <laughs> yeah, and my mom was the same way. If you don't have actual homework from school, okay, here's this workbook that I found. Do something. And you better get it right. I was like, oh, fuck, can I just sit and watch my cartoons, please? <laughs> Not an option. Not yeah. an option. I so think, I, you know, I, I especially for Jane that, Pittman, that was, you know, she saw what, the violence that had happened for for um, people of color trying to learn to read. And then here was, you know, Jimmy mm -hmm. being raised with it like it was natural and she didn't want him to take it, take it for granted. Yeah. And I, mm -hmm. I love that they put that tidbit in there. It was very well placed. And then... Does so that count we, as a John Sy? I'm counting it. Drink. I'm counting yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, I just uh, thinking because then we're led into uh, the next moment, which is you know the revelation that uh, you know first they start by saying he's been shot. It's like, well, it's yeah. he, and and then just yeah, he's dead, which is like I, again, I'm like. Oh, and she's asked by who, and they said nobody knows, and she goes, somebody knows. Somebody knows. Yeah. 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 It's um, horrible. Let's see. Um, there's, there's also, actually, yeah. a, I think uh, a little bit before that, when uh, Jimmy had um, first came back, he went to the church while they were holding service. Yes. And he gave that speech, you know, he's like, I've been, I've been up here trying to do things and help our people. I've been with Dr. King. I ate at his house. We've been, we marched together. We've been in jail together, but I know my, my folks here. I ain't heard of y'all doing anything to help the cause and whatnot. And the preacher tells him, you know, you boy, you just bring in trouble. You stop all that jive talking, whatnots. And Jane is like, if you don't shut the hell up and let this boy speak, 
Like the balls on this woman. <laughs> she just told the damn preacher to shut up. I mean, yeah, she actually really sl- sl- I love like, sl- slams her yeah. hand down. It, it's like yeah, that same that cane that fall. she has. That's yeah. that same cane from the very beginning that she had as a little girl. She maxed that on the floor. Like, hey, don't go ahead, baby. We're listening. <laughs> and I, lo- I, I thought that I thought that that was pretty epic. You know, I loved it. Oh, let's yeah. see here. Um, I think we skipped after that to uh, she, she's talking about a hospital appointment that she has to go to. And um, the old the guy that owns the plantation, his wife is driving her there. And, you know, she again, Miss Pittman is very respected. So it, it's not no thing for them to actually be taking care of her like that. And they end up seeing a bus that's uh, marked Freedom Coalition on it. And the bus is on fire and young black men are being arrested. And the sheriff comes up to the window and says, Oh, you know, just a bit of trouble. We're so sorry about this miss. You know, what's her name? I don't remember what her name was. And then she says, and then he looks at uh, Jane and he's like, how you doing grandma? And Jane is sitting there quiet. I, I don't believe it, it was tried. It was played off by the lady that you know she she's old uh sheriff you gotta remember you know she like she can't hear good that's why she's not answering you no i'm very sure she purposely just gave him yeah. a side eye and did did the silent mm, and was not giving him the time of day and i yeah. love that yeah absolutely and that's the thing is that obviously words can be defiant but silence can also be defiance and yes, it was used often in sit-ins and demonstrations where you know you would have, you know, rednecks yelling at, at, at people of color and they were just sitting there nice and quiet, mm-hmm. you know, and that that can be defiant as well. And I think, you know, look, Miss Jane didn't have anything good to say, so she wasn't going to say anything right, at all. So she didn't say anything at all. Yep. 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 So, you know, they, they I'm assuming they got to the appointment and then got back home. Um, and a, a little bit after that, I think, like the landowner calls all of them together and he's like, you know, I don't, I don't know what y'all might've heard or what's going on, but there will be no, and none of them damn demonstrations on this land. So y'all can just put that thought out your head right now. And it goes through, of course, you know, the, I, I've been good to you people. Like y'all don't have to pay rent. Classic. You don't got to give me no eggs. You ain't got to give me no milk. All I ask is, you know, give me some of the pecans that, that you pick and the berries, but you don't even do that right. So I just want y'all to know, don't be on that bullshit or else. And this felt very evocative of earlier scenes in the film on the plantations when, yeah. you know, they, they exactly. would say, you know, gather the, the slaves around, you know, yeah. and, uh, and so I, again, that's what I was saying earlier. It's just this feeling throughout the film of how little things, you know, it's so feel circular. like they, yeah, it's, yeah. And in, and in many um, cultures, actually, time is circular. It's not described as linear. Um, there are parallels throughout time. Things keep happening. Yeah. If it's happened once, it'll happen again. And I think the parallels in this movie are very striking and well done. You know, you have yeah. Ned and Jimmy's deaths. And then you also have the, mm-hmm. but I'm good to y'all kind of speech from the white people that we see, yeah. I think, two or three times, not just yeah, because we yeah, have the two ranchers in this in the 1800s, and then again in, in the 1960s. Um, but it it really shows, I think, how uh, the times change, and certain things might quote unquote get better, but the attitudes don't change. Changing people's minds, right, is what yeah. kind of civil rights was also about. It was obviously about changing the laws, of course, but it was also about changing, especially you know obviously white people's minds and raising consciousness. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, saw a lot in Selma. Yeah. Laws, you know, they're tricky things because they can be undone. That's why the more important work is changing minds um, so that you can ensure the, you know, the future. And, and that's harder to do much harder. Um, and I, and I think that's what you see here is the circular nature of, you know, things, sort of social policies and things like that might gradually change. But you see the sort of, again, the circular nature of how people are and, and the way uh, and the way they treat other people. So, yeah. Yeah. 
Now, at this part in the movie, we're actually almost, almost done with uh, her memoirs. The reporter, um, he gets a call from his boss. And he's like, yo, there's this big thing going on with uh, NASA and space program. We, you got to get there to report on it. And he doesn't want to leave. So he's like, um, there's a lot more that this woman can tell us, you know, and, and his boss isn't trying to have it at all. It's like, look, this is the biggest, hottest thing that's going on in the country right now. Nobody's going to care about an old woman. I have a business to run and I need stories that are going to sell papers. So he, he very, very begrudgingly agrees that, okay, fine. He's going to go do it. Cause you know, the, the, his boss basically put the job on He's like, either you do it or I'll find somebody else to. So that's basically show up or I'm done with you. And he, he really, didn't have a choice. So, you know, he goes and talks to Miss Pittman and says, you know, he has to leave. And she's like, oh, I've done bored you now. Because she would always say, you ain't had your fill of me yet. Like every time, and then, you know, they, he was recording everything. But, you know, she, she wasn't mad. I, you know, I think uh, he that she might have considered him a friend. And she was just joking around with him. But he goes, she goes on to tell him, you know, some folks might think I'm crazy like even you might think I'm crazy because I sit here and I talk to this oak she's next to a massive oak tree and has a nice spot set up she says you know the people in, in my community they made this place nice for me they gave me gave me a chair you know they got it all uh, ni nice just for her to sit there and relax and she says she spends hours there you know just you know thanking God for the blessings and lifetimes that she's received and everything and you know, she she looks at him and is a bit sad, I think, too, that he has to leave. Like, he very clearly, you could see it on his face, he very clearly wants to continue this story with her. But he doesn't have a choice but to leave. On his way out, there's two cop cars that are going, that pass him in the opposite direction. He stops and starts turning around because they're, he thinks they're headed um, to the plantation. When it cuts there, we see the uh, landowner. He's telling them that y'all can't go to church you know, right now. Don't You can't leave the property. It's not going to be safe. There's a big thing that just happened. And I think Jane, it was Jane that asked, you know, well, is, is it Jimmy? And he says, yeah, he was shot. Mind you, this happened while he was in jail. He was yeah. shot. And whoop. <laughs> he, he he was shot and you know his his mom is standing right next to jane and they said you know I, I, is he dead and he nods yes and full mama cry because her baby has just been murdered and it's it's so horrible to see and to hear but you know miss jane already reads the situation and and she 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 again womaned up and did the thing and you know she starts leaving it's like y'all I, I need somebody to take me down to the courthouse and the guy's like miss jane you can't leave okay i mean no disrespect you raised me when i was a boy you helped raise my children but um, so you though you cannot leave right now and she just looks at him and um it, it's a little stare down for a couple seconds and he's like what would you even go there for she said jimmy Say, well, I just told you he's dead. A part of him is dead, yeah. But again, that's the impact that Jimmy had on people's folks. Yeah. You know, they he he still beats very hard in their hearts and in their heads. And she's like, no, nah, I'm going to the courthouse. And she ends up going. You know, they they uh, have a truck with, with um so, um so a chair set up for her so she can ride comfortably. And she gets out of the truck at, at the courthouse. She's helped a little bit of the way. But then, you know, she um, uh, pulls away from her friend's um, hand and makes the trek slowly but surely on her own all the way up to the fountain. And outside is the sheriff and a bunch of deputies. I think there was like a couple secretaries looking out outside through the window in the building. And she she goes and takes a drink from the white fountain, and, you know, a good long one, too. And it's very, very, very subtle. But before she leaves, she turns and looks at the sheriff. And it was like, okay, you ain't got nothing to say? You done? What you gonna do? All right, I'm here. <laughs> yeah. All right. Like, I, I, I fucking dare you. I very dare yeah. you. And she, and she walks away. And by the time she turns around and we're looking at where the truck is parked again, there's a huge crowd there. 
that has gathered white and black folks. And they're all just looking at this woman like, damn, what the fuck? It's it, it, it's a it, it's not a scene that there are a lot of words in. Actually, I, I don't think anyone speaks during that time. But like Amy was saying earlier, silence can be very much a deadly weapon. And she yeah. basically gave him a katana chop to the face. The whole sequence is incredibly powerful. I you mm-hmm. know just remarked upon it, and and really, I I think the the power of you know that starts up. Um, when she's talking to the reporter by the tree and, and sort of builds throughout, but especially that, you know, moment when she's walking towards the fountain and and the way it's uh, filmed and just the way the music is used. Cause you're right. There's no dialogue during it. Uh, I, I found it very moving and powerful and, and then, yeah, just the way the crowd gathers at, at the end and uh, yeah, it was kind of like I was kind of a bit speechless watching, you know, mm-hmm. you know, watching that sequence. And it goes back to the beginning when Jimmy asked her to be there for the first demonstration at yep. the water fountain, and she mm-hmm. said no, and she was there Full for circle. him. Full later. circle, yeah, yeah. And not near one person stopped her at and all. What are you gonna do with a hundred and ten year old woman? I hey, mean, you know, some, some, folks are, with the some folks are evil like that. Some folks yeah. are evil like that. So, I, I don't, I, and, she, and she, you know, she wasn't doing it to be malicious, but she really was just proving a point. And I think that point got across very well. Yeah. And especially with the, the separate restrooms and the separate water fountains, it, it really shows no one died. Nothing blew up. It's, yeah. it's the, it, they, they have the same bodily needs as everyone else. Um, to drink and to go to the bathroom, and it's just, you know, uh, it, it's a you would you know it's it's a very small act that makes a huge difference at that at, you know when difference. it is segregated like that. Yeah, and um, that's uh, basically the last thing. Um, the the reporter um on his way back after seeing the cop cars, he gets there in time to see Miss Pittman take the drink and then walk away. Um, I don't think she noticed him, but you know, like, like the truck went right past him while he was across the street. And uh, at the end, you know, they show her walking in a field and the voiceover comes up, you know, five months later, after all of the recordings that were done is when she died. So thus went an epic, epic woman in our history that probably not that many folks remember nowadays. And that's sad. Yeah. yeah. And there's one final one for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, another drink. <laughs> um, yeah, it's... I, I have to say, like I said at the beginning, I didn't know about this movie, and I was very happy to have seen it. Uh, it it's... It was powerful to, to watch, and... And I'm kind of mad at myself for not uh, knowing about it because I, I think it's. I, I know, but I think it does kind of speak to a sort of limited perspective. And, uh, you know, it's the same, you know, same old story. We, I, I don't think that black stories are, are pushed very hard. And even something which was. Uh, you know, probably acclaimed at the time is kind of, yeah, now granted, I don't know that many TV movies from the 1970s anyway. Um, but, but it seems to me that, uh, you know, I, I would have liked to have heard something about this, you know, mm-hmm. along the way, but, uh, but I do know. So I'm very yeah, happy about that. Especially because it really, the art of storytelling in this movie is, mm-hmm. I mean, I, you could do a literary analysis on it. We talked about the parallels and themes mm-hmm. and, um, you know, uh, differences in perspective. I mean, it's, it's, it's actually, it feels to me, it feels like a work of literature, which is the highest praise for me. Cause I'm, uh, you know, getting my PhD in Chinese literature. Um, so I, I really think that the storytelling itself was very artful. Um, and it's, and it, it, and the acting was so good, it, it, you know, it, it kind of slightly mm-hmm. made up for being kind of a low budget, you know, made for TV um, kind of movie. Uh, it didn't feel like that. It felt 
a little bit half documentary, a little bit half kind yeah. of drama, uh, person of interest story, basically. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I'm going to agree with what uh, Guilty Undertaker said there. The makeup artist deserved an award. And that is absolute facts. Like Cicely Tyson, like when you saw um, Miss Pittman in like her 20s, that was actually Cicely Tyson without all the prosthetics. And they did such great makeup in aging her throughout this throughout the whole story it was spectacular and very good for something coming from the 70s yeah yeah but um yeah i any closing thoughts before we start to wrap up cuz i do want to if you have the time i do want to talk about one or two other things oh yeah for sure. um, um, i will but, i'll put up a drink to Miss Jane Pittman, long may your legacy reign, and also a rest in power to Cicely Tyson. Thank you, ma'am, for your skill that you shared with us over the years. I will definitely drink to that. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, I don't, I don't have any closing thoughts on the movie. I've pretty much said my piece about it. My main yeah. thing was wanting to point out the parallels because that's kind mm -hmm. of what I do <laughs> with literature. So themes, they're important. Yep. Yeah. Same. And, and for the record, I do believe that this was based on a book. So, um, so people should uh, definitely check that out if, and if they enjoyed the movie. Um, not that I have a, uh, <laughs> Not that I find myself with that much room in my schedule at the moment for piling on additional books to read, but uh, mm -hmm. it, it is something I'd probably like to check out in the future. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I think that's about it. Um, thank you for picking this, AK, and, and for coming oh. in to talk about it. Thank uh, you for having me to talk about it. I'm, I'm very glad that I you know, what, was able to get something that was as moving as shown this woman's life. Yeah. And um yeah, so obviously we are changing to <laughs> yeah, thanks, Leave. Yeah, that, that's that's about what my life is. <laughs> Johns to read list. <laughs> I also think this was a fitting closing to our um our celebration of, of uh black excellence this month. Too. Indeed, indeed. So indeed. yeah, and and I actually yeah. thank you guys for doing the whole series you know it's been great to watch and learn and i've oh oh i mean i always enjoy hanging with you guys but I've been it's been great tonight and i'm glad we were able to have these conversations absolutely and we're excited to uh, to have you on for for something maybe something a little less tear jerking next time because <laughs> i cried a couple times you know surprisingly i i, I did not cry surprisingly i tried I think not to but i still did <laughs> it is it is a tear jerker though yeah, it is a tear jerker. I, I will definitely say that. Yeah, I. Uh, <laughs> I mean, like I said before, it's just like you know, tragic thing after tragic thing just kept happening. Um, mm -hmm. I, and I'm you know chuckling a little bit because at a certain point that's all you can do uh, because otherwise you're just tearing up over and over. But yeah, mm -hmm. it's. Uh, it was very emotional, but I would, I second what Amy says. It would be nice to have you back on for uh, something which may be, uh, you know, you know, it, we can have some fun and sort of joke around and, uh, and, and talking about, um, you, we were talking earlier about the fact that you're a, a Star Trek fan Um <laughs> Yes. Which I, I noticed because I, I think you had a, like an icon or something somewhere. I think it's like on Twitter or something that shows mm -hmm. like a, I think it's something Klingon. Yeah, it's the uh, the Klingon um, head council built like their their main yeah. basically like their White House is what yeah. it is. I love the Klingons, <laughs> even yeah. though they're war mongering bastards sometimes. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> they speak they speak to my soul. I love them. You know they uh, like weapons. I like weapons. They literally have a weapon dedicated to war in their homes. That's like a staple tradition that they do. I have weapons. You can't see them on the wall right now, but that's because I'm moving. You'll see them when, when I get to a new place. Um, is that was is that your main sci-fi uh, interests? 
AK Star Trek, or do you also have some favorites? Um, oh no, I, I am all over the board. Um, I love Star Trek. Um, I am familiar with uh, Star Wars. Uh, you know, not as familiar as I am with Star Trek, but I do love both the fandoms. Um, it, any type of sci-fi slash fantasy, a- anything, I'm pretty much into. You know, it, what genre does AK like of movies? Yes, it is the answer. <laughs> I am all over the board. Wait, but do you like horror? That's always where we lose people. See, um, I, I, I do tend to be a slightly finicky when it comes to okay. horror. I, I Only haven't met many though. people that love horror as much as I do. I get excited every year to watch all of the horror movies that have come okay, out. Okay, so. question I, 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 I do enjoy them. I'll say that. I, I like watching them, but I'll watch them in the daytime when I'm not going to be sick. <laughs> question, I'll though. I'll put it that way. Alien, is it science fiction or is it horror? Both. Okay, everyone that's an acceptable that. answer. Yeah, everyone always <laughs> says both. it's both. Yeah, because yeah, it absolutely is a horror story. You got this huge ass freaking random ass alien coming to kill you with, with uh, <laughs> claws that you can't block and freaking acid spit. You know, I mean, how, how is that not science fiction? But at the same time, yeah, you have an alien that spits freaking acid at you and has an extra mouth inside his mouth that can reach you even if you're holding him back. How is that not horror? <laughs> <laughs> it fits. Which, by the way, uh, everybody, uh, if you guys haven't seen it, I did do a discussion on Alien with uh, the wonderful Carol Brown, and uh, it, which, which I've been... Uh, very happy to say because at first it didn't get that many views and then recently it the YouTube algorithm caught it and it's been getting like it's now one of the highest viewed videos on the channel so uh, so I'm very happy about that so go ahead and check that out if you haven't seen it because like I don't like uh, quote unquote horror movies in general usually but Alien is definitely a, an exception where I'm fascinated by that movie because uh, it's that sort of dark, you know, emptiness of space that I just find really insanely creepy and evocative. Can I bring I up what is on the cover? I did get you to watch the, the others, which is more suspense, but I got you to watch what's something. On, what's on the cover of, uh, I think it's Aliens 2, actually. And it's a promo shot of that creepy egg that they have. And it says, you know, in space, no one can hear you scream. So, Very worry. Yeah. Yeah. And are also, there, Sigourney Weaver is freaking awesome in that role. Are there She's any amazing. comedy movies you enjoy? Let's go to the opposite end of the comedy. Oh, spectrum. oh, so so many, man. Um, just because it's pinged back on my radar again, because um, part two is finally coming out, coming to America. One of the greatest damn comedies ever made with the black, with black centric characters in the eighties, I believe it was. <laughs> And it was also a lightweight part two to Trading Places, another one of my favorite old school movies. And I don't think that many people caught that uh, that connection, that the Winthorps were the homeless people that uh, Prince Hakeem gave the money to in uh, Coming to America. I just thought that was a great callback. Yeah, I know I've I've definitely seen Coming to America, but it's been a number of years. I, oh, I know, go so. rewatch it. So the, I'm, the, I'm the due chuckles, for a rewatch. Well, yeah, the, the chuckles are worth it. <laughs> um, let's see, comedies. God, I can't even think of like a whole bunch of them off the top of my head. I, I, I think a lot of uh, teeny bopper movies are funny. Um, actually, I put a po- post up in one of my nerd groups on Facebook, which was a picture of Captain America. And that, that was, the, I think it was a before and after. It was, an a- the after was Captain America. And... He's holding his shield. And the before was Chris Evans with whipped cream on his nipples and Johnson <laughs> and a damn random ass banana in, in, in the back door. I, I don't know how or why they did that. But yeah, Chris Evans played a character in Not Another Teen Movie. It was a spoof on all those coming of age movies. Movie. And that shit is hilarious. It's still I funny today. It. It's so funny. I like ones like that, like scary movie that make fun of a certain genre. Yeah, yes. not another teen movie makes fun of all of the rom coms, you know, where she takes off her glasses and lets down her hair and all of a sudden she's pretty. Like they go on all the different tropes. Yeah, really the token good. black guy. 
Yeah. Was so my black guy. Oh Every scene he was in, and he said it in the beginning, like, oh, no, I'm just here, you know, to, to be the token black guy. You know, I either have braids or an afro. I say stuff like bling bling. And that's basically his character. And every time you saw him, the boy had a different, mostly african-american hairstyle and was saying some of the most ridiculous shit like they didn't take themselves real seriously and the whole way they did the movie was great you had the damn girl foreign girl that didn't apparently didn't know the customs so she was walking around naked at yeah. school the whole damn time yeah they always and have they allowed this. Student. yeah they got all of the all of the different uh i also it i don't was. know if you've ever seen walk hard ak yes the yes. talk story that takes the genre of uh, the hardships of musicians and like, you mm -hmm. know, so like it kind of parodies Ray and um, the uh, Johnny Cash movie. Yeah. And it's just like, <laughs> like I whenever love, his dad gets love cut in half movies. every single time, I'm just like the wrong I so love bad. spoof movies like that. Um, <laughs> shit, what's another one? I just had it in my head. Oh, the damn Twilight spoof movie. Oh yeah, I forgot what that's I, called. I, yeah, I don't remember what it's that called off good. the top of my head, but it was also the right amount of cheese that I like in those types of movies. Um, hold on, I think I think I just downloaded that the other day. Vampires suck. That's what Vampire it's called. Vampires suck. Vampires. Well, by suck. that, kids, yes. once again, she means she paid for it and then downloaded it. So. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but you know, there there is the other side of comedy where it, it's kind of dark and sinister comedy, um, and people in random shenanigans. Like, um, what was it? Uh, was it High Spirits? Where they they were in a hosty house and all types of ridiculousness was happening, but it was still hilarious. And there's a couple more like that as well. Now, uh, it I can't pick like a favorite genre because I just like them all. I mean, I love to laugh. Every now and then, seeing the mystery in a horror movie is great. Um, of course, again, I love to laugh. Uh, I love action. Um, ro I think maybe maybe rom-coms probably would be my least favorite. But everything else, I'm like all in on board. If you're entertaining, chances are I'm going to like you. And I'm very prone to period pieces, which is another reason that I got into Game of Thrones. Because they, they, I like seeing different cultures in those in the early years of you know humans and whatnots how do you feel about romantic period pieces <laughs> romantic period pieces yeah you know you have your pride and prejudices and i'm like yeah no i'll, I'll pass i it's a good movie oh, no, mind no, you. you i know it's a good movie i i know look i i am also a fan of lady knightley don't get me wrong i am a fan but uh, I, that that one that format and that story just didn't interest me at all. <sighs> sorry, <laughs> I'll take two Give drinks for that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'll do it too. <laughs> um, but no, uh, I do I do really enjoy uh, Karen Knightley. She's a great actress, and I wish we would see more of her on the big screen. Still, I, the last thing that I saw her in. I didn't even realize it was her that I was seeing because she was in full makeup in uh, Star Wars. She Wait, was. Uh, <laughs> she, uh, it was. It's one of the prequels. I don't remember yeah. which one. But when, yeah, that, when uh, that, what's her name was a decoy, Kira yeah, Knight was the one that was playing the decoy with the full makeup and whatnot. I'm just I didn't know that that, I'm just wondering how that's the last thing <laughs> you saw because that was like one of her very first things. Was it one of her first things? Hasn't she been acting since like Bend It Like Beckham? Way yeah, but she she was only like fourteen at the time of the Phantom Menace when she was playing the decoy. That was back in nineteen ninety nine. Really? Mm -hmm. Why do I think AK is like Benjamin Button? <laughs> I, apparently, <laughs> I like. apparently, I I I don't know. I guess I thought she was older than that. Mm. All right then, my bad. <laughs> Um, I do also like, um, I know some of them have not been done as well, but Legendary is really good at doing um, a lot of these um, old school period war movies like uh, 300. They did that um, from Frank Miller's, um, what's the name of the damn thing, graphic novel. Um, they also did The Spirit, which The Spirit didn't work out that well coming from the graphic novel. It wasn't adapted as well as 300, but it was still decently enjoyable. Sin City. You know, it, I, I like movies that come from the world of comics and 
graphic novels. That they, I love seeing those things come to life in the live action. Um, so I very much enjoy that genre. Oh, uh, let's see, Supernatural. Yeah, I, 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 I think that ties in with horror sometimes. I like that too. Yeah, I was going to say Sin City is actually one that I really enjoy. I I remember yeah. I, I saw that in theaters when it came out at like a really late midnight showing. And that was a lot of fun. Just mm -hmm. the, the sort of audience reactions of that movie made it worth going real late. <laughs> My mates. <laughs> yeah, I love it. And Elijah Wood, I believe, was in that. And surprisingly... That damn innocent face kid plays a good damn villain. In in all of the dark movies that I've seen him in, like he's perfectly cast in those roles. I'm like, oh, I'm Elijah, bro. Something we, we need to talk. Are you okay? You yeah, I, I, I think especially in those very early years after Lord of the Rings, he was looking to do stuff like as far removed from Frodo as possible. And he was still uh, he was still such a kid when that was going on. I think when yeah. they wrapped on lord of the rings he was only like 17 or 18 still which yeah. was crazy you know but the kids got skill i like his versatility that he is able to do that it's like david Tennant. david Tennant is probably my number two favorite doctor but damn it he plays a fantastic villain man yeah Him, he's great as the drum great series the... oh man yeah. it's freaking great he's yeah he's really good at the, a lot like a lot of range, basically, mm -hmm. <laughs> in some mm -hmm. of these actors that you you see them one way, like like with a tenant, and then all of a sudden they acted something else. It's like, wow, that's yeah, that's really surprising. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. And uh, Kate, she said, who remembers Flipper? Yeah, it, <laughs> what what was the other freaking Marine Life movie that they did? Free Willy. Free who Willy. remembers that kid? Yeah, was I, it, uh, jo Joshua Renfro, Bradley Renfro. That's who that was. Yeah, who who remembers that? No, actually, I uh, hold on. I don't want to be wrong about who that was. Just in what, it was one of those teeny boppers back then. If it wasn't Brad Renfro, he was like a curly haired, uh, light brown haired uh, guy. Definitely narrows it down. <laughs> <laughs> well, with um, children, it does. <laughs> Oh, uh, awesome. you, 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 you know what? It's not even it's not even somebody who I remember. Like, so. I'm going to know the name when you say it, because I can picture his face. Who was it? No, like, I don't even recognize his name. It's uh, apparently uh, Jason James R Richter or something like that. I, I OK, maybe I don't yeah. remember that accurately. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I I, Jason it, James Richter? Yeah, I, uh, he must, I he must not have acted in too much after yeah. that role. Oh, wow. Yeah, I barely recognize him as an adult. Huh. Now, Bradley Renfro was one of the kid actors that was decent back in that time, though. Also, yeah. I like things where people go to fantasy lands, um, uh, like um, the Narnia Chronicles. And also, uh, damn it, what was it? Freaking thing with the Orin. Never ending story. Oh, that was one of my, one of my absolute faves. One of my I remember that from faves. the Sphinx stream we did with Nessie. You showed the uh the Sphinxes from that movie, yes. I think. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. That that's still that movie is still a beloved uh story in my collection. Uh have you seen Stranger Things, the, AK? Because that also reminds are me you of when joking? That, that reminds just me of when you have I seen Stranger Things. Some people still oh, have it. You have the freaking Orin, you bastard. I hate you. <laughs> I got it at one of the uh I I think at one of the Con of Thrones. Hmm. Yeah, I actually found That's it one awesome. of Yeah. And I, I saw That's that and was awesome. like, yep, I don't care how uh how ridiculous I'll <laughs> I might look wearing wearing it. I am absolutely going to get it. So, yeah, I would love to have that. You know, Never Ending Story was great. Uh, you know, rest in peace, Jonathan Brandis. Um, let's see, pr pretty much any category you want to throw at me, I probably like a quite a few things in that genre. I, I, I may, I've always made it a point to bounce around, um, especially when it came to music as a kid, because, you know, there's always those, you know, you're, you're black. Why do you listen to that? Because it's a good song. 
You know, like I literally got question of why I had a Jason Priestley um, when 90210 was still big, the original one in my locker. And I was like, well, why, why, are, why not? What the fuck does, are you concerned about my locker and music taste for? Okay. There's too much good shit out there. And I never like putting myself in a box. I always Meanwhile, got... I grew up liking hip hop and everyone was like, you're whiter than sour cream. <laughs> why are you exactly. And that's how it is. And, and I'm like, I'm Dr. Dre is life. Get off my case. It's that's funny exactly because I mean, it is, and I think it's dumb. I, I think everybody kind of knows, you know, I say they kind of, of course, everybody knows that I'm, I'm super into film scores and that's the way it's been for a very long time. But when I was younger, something else that I really loved to listen to, uh, and I still do was Motown, which was, I, I was mm -hmm. always listening to the drifters, the four tops, you know, a lot of groups like that. And, um, and uh, yeah, it, it's, it's funny that those are my sort of two genres, but I <laughs> bounce from like Motown to film scores. And uh, yeah, uh, I've never much been in, into too much else, um, except I did go through when I was uh, younger, uh, an Elvis Presley phase. Um, but, but yeah. Uh, technical I, uh, black music that was ripped off by a white guy. <laughs> yeah, 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 pretty much, pretty much. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, but, that, that, that's just it, though. You know, that things, I think, fit well for some people. I guess and everything isn't for everybody. So I totally understand if, if someone wouldn't like a genre of music that might be or seem like it's specific to a race. Um, actually, Amy, you just reminded me of a funny story where me and one of my friends had to check our other friend on the nonsense that her drunken self was spitting. We're at her house and... She, I don't know how we got on the music subject, but she was like, man, Eminem wouldn't be, and, oh no, she said Dr. Dre wouldn't be anything without Eminem. One oh, of our boys yeah. was asleep in the chair. He woke right about his sleep. <laughs> like, the fuck did you just say? Oh, no. And we at the school are like, do you know <sighs> this man has been in the game far damn longer Long than time. Eminem? He's the one that fucking found Eminem. Yeah, it's the opposite, actually. <laughs> Right, you know, you yeah. you shut your blasphemous mouth up right now until you go <laughs> learn something. The fuck? It's like you yeah, stop that right now. That's that's really bad. I have, oof. yeah, that's we just had lack to correct of correct her right away or mm -hmm. hip history, if you will. Sorry. Yeah, we 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 cut that shit down right Ooh, away. Yeah, like seriously. no, no, ma. Like you cool, like, but there's I need a reason to that Eminem thing. is always rapping about Dr. Dre, and that's because Dre was his mentor. It does not go it's, exactly, no. exactly. Oh my goodness, that yeah, that, I know. I'm really sad. I'm almost <laughs> as sad as the movie made me just hearing that. It's yeah, it's absurd. Like um, you know, other forms of movies. I, I also tend to like like biopics or you know movies that are. I know some of them say based on a true story that are just ridiculous blatant skews of what the story might have been but let's say something like a bronx tale mm. you know a lot of folks didn't know the guy that played sunny chaz palmentary that was actually his story as a kid collagero was him as a kid like that's what he went through okay. in his neighborhood back in the day in the bronx and it, it told a great story it was actually it started off if i remember correctly as a screenplay like he did that in the theaters first on stage and then the movie deal came later so stuff like that, I think. And also that deals with um, heavy subjects of race and culture and how some folks are brought up and what type of bad things like the mafia <laughs> that was running the neighborhood and whatnot. So I, I love seeing stuff like that. Um, like I said, I'm all over the board. If you name something, I'd probably talk about it. <laughs> yeah, I... Uh... I mean, there's a lot to draw from, so I, I think we're gonna have fun coming up with something for you to come on and talk about. But I, I think I think we'll I think we'll probably do multiple things because at the very least we will have you on to you know to start with. It'll be something Star Trek, and then we'll we can move from there. I'm wondering because you know you told us like the shows that you know you preferred. Um, did you have uh, you know which of the movies do you like? Uh, which movie? Oh, which like specific movies? Yeah. That I like. Okay, specifics. Hmm. 
I am very prone to loving some things from my childhood. You know, not not always uh, movies, but I think sometimes the way they were presented were as episodes. Um, like my favorite thing, well, one of my favorite things to watch on uh, Nickelodeon on Saturdays, they had like that that uh, segment of um, they would show like Grimm's Fairy Tales or some other kid movie special edition. I think is what it was called between two o'clock and four o'clock, and. I first saw the Box of Delights movie. It's a BBC movie. So, you know, I'm in Bumsville, Ohio. I didn't get a whole lot of uh, cultural programming back then. And that was one of the first movies. It's basically about a boy having to go through this random adventure during Christmas time while he's home from his boarding school. And there's a bunch of shenanigans that ensue. You know, it's an old movie, but it's great because of the, of the fantasy element of it. Um, again, like I said, coming to America, hero. Frosh and Tiger Hidden Vinga, I'm very prone to loving martial arts things. It's always been a fighting style that has fascinated me. Uh, Red Cliff. <gasps> I don't know what that is. Please go look that up. Watch it. Or well, one of us does. <laughs> <laughs> but look, look, Amy, I'm telling you, we should talk. Okay. I love I, I mean, Red I mean, all in these movies. so much. Red Cliff, like oh my the last God, when warlord. So young is controlling the wind. I'm like, yeah. I freaking it's love that. It's such a stuff. good movie. Oh, For Ashley, my God. Um, I think Takeshi Kaneshiro from uh, House of Flying Daggers was also in that one too. He played one of the um, com the general commanders and did a spectacular job telling that I story. I love it because it leans into the fantasy of the Romance of the Three mm -hmm. Kingdoms, which was the novel from the 1600s about this period, which was in the 300s, yes. you know, not that long ago in China. And, <laughs> um, and it leans into the magic that was kind of added in later and the built up build up of the myth. Oh my God, I've not met any other person who's seen that that's not Chinese. Bro, I'm so that, glad that you've is, seen it. That is one of the <laughs> oh. best movies because you know you have the I'm writing this down right now. Fighting. You have the culture of the the era that um those people were in at that time. You see some of the brilliance, like like one of the things with the military commanders is one person wants to do it with um the new ways of their fighting formations. Another one wants to do it with the old ways. And it, it's spectacular to see both of these things come together and work the way they do. And just to see the, the human drama of it all, like it, the, what the hell happened? Was, was it a baby or just a baby and her mom? I, I don't remember, but something was going down. One was running with a child and the guy that had to save her came from like out of nowhere and at the last second caught her. Like me and my old roommate, we watched that for the first time like many years ago, and we were both like, "Oh shit!" Because the <laughs> tension that was happening in the movie at that time was just so great. And yeah, the movies like that that can make me feel, especially, is are, are my favorites. That that's why Red Cliff still stands uh, out. To me. I love Red Cliff. I think that's already on our long, long list that John and I put together <laughs> because I love that movie so much. Dude, there's a lot of them out there, man. Like. I, Again, I'm prone to old shit. Um, the Leg Fighters. I don't know if either of you have ever heard that, but that was one so. of my favorite old school kung fu hits. Like it, it, growing up in New York, our Saturday morning cartoons. A lot of times, after like the actual cartoons went off, we had a whole like two three hour block of kung fu. Nice. And so that's how I know like all those old school titles and stories that were done. Yeah, you know, I was a huge Bruce Lee fan, and loved everything about that era. And you know, I just the things that move me and there's a lot so I, I can't always pinpoint specific movies or even a specific genre because i'm really all over the place there's too much good shit out there and i like to be entertained yeah i uh that might have been oh, the wait. first amy gasp on this channel yeah the i monster know squad. it, it took me off surprise. guard have y'all seen the monster squad that's another old school fave uh, kid movie of mine. I have not. I don't. I think I've heard I, of it. Yeah, I've heard of it. I, I just haven't seen it. it uh, again, it's one of those cheesy '80s early early '90s movies, but it, the the story is is fun, and there's some intrigue in there, and yeah, I I like it a lot. So yeah, that's me. What do you like? Yes, <laughs> everything. <laughs> Okay, cool. Um, 
Yeah, so we've been going for about two and a half hours. I uh, think we can probably wrap up so that <laughs> we don't oh, keep you sure. here. Okay. And, uh, but yeah, just to recap, this is it, guys. We are, um, yeah, we're going to have like, I'm going to push the Amy gasp now. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, only, it's, it's only fair. History um, has been made on this yeah. day. I'm cinematic <laughs> realms. Double, double drink because, out. double drink because it's the first one that happened. Ugh. <laughs> I do want to, uh, I'm putting this question out now because actually AK suggested it in our private chat. And I was wondering, um, at first Amy and I kind of weren't going to go this way because we thought it wouldn't quite be as interactive. So maybe it wouldn't be worth it, but would you guys like us to, at least to start off, I mean, and we'll see how long people are, you know, interested in it. It would like us to do a, uh, you know, basically a premiere for our uh, video versions of, of the podcast moving forward. So you guys could still uh, be in the chat and, and watch it. Uh, or, you know, or would you guys just like us to drop it, uh, you know, whenever? And it, it so is you'd a be talking to past us, so we would not be seeing it, but we yeah. just, we could come and hang yeah. out with you guys in the chat and respond to what you guys are saying. Yeah, um, yeah, it, like, it, it, might, it might not work, but you know, it, the tech is there to do it. So yeah, try it out. I mean, we have we do have this time slot. We've had it for for months, so you know, we could <clears throat> yeah. use it to premiere. Yeah, I mean, um, at the very least, we could do this first one as a premiere. Um, since it'll basically be you and me bantering, and so, so it might be you two know, buddies good. bantering. TM, don't you steal my stuff, John? Buddy yeah. banter is mine. So, so it's uh, you know, if people want to still be in the chat to kind of joke about how we're doing for our first official podcast, um, I, you know, we could do that, or you know, I'll, I'll leave it up to you guys if you guys are interested in that. Uh, you know, maybe that's something we can try out. Mm -hmm. um but then again amy it's like we want our saturdays off so i mean it, it, i'm it's... not promising i'll be in the chat every time if we're doing yeah i need a break right yeah yeah see that's what i'm saying you know the, the <laughs> option would be there if folks want to chat at the premiere or you know, we we do always get a lot of silent listeners of folks that never do come into the chat even when we're live but they're there my dad is so, one of them yeah. <laughs> All right so you know just because you never know you know and if it doesn't work out you take it off later meh no harm, no foul. Yeah, but uh, anyway, so next uh, next week at some point, uh, whether we do it as a premiere on Saturday or if we you know drop it whenever, uh, Amy and I will be doing our first official podcast uh, episode, and we're basically just going to be you know introducing it to you know a potential new audience and and sort of getting used to our new format and uh and we're just going to basically talk about you know we'll probably cover a wide range of topics like you know the movies we want to talk about you know we'll talk a bit about you know ourselves because obviously that's what you all just want to hear um just us talking about ourselves um but uh <laughs> But and then once we do that, the following week after that, we are going to cover The Wizard of Oz, which is going to be a lot of fun because obviously it's a classic movie, and Amy is going to get to talk about monkeys. Ah, I love it! I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah, I, I love the whole story of The Wizard of Oz, but I, I am very uh, pro to the canon of uh, the Wicked uh, musical. Oh my god. <laughs> Defying gravity makes me cry every single time. Uh, great. You know what this Nina means? Menzel, boy. Oof. You know what this means now? It's like, now that, you know, you put that out there, I, we're going to have to talk about Wicked during that stream. So yes, please. We're, of course. We're, we're, we're going to have to, like, try. I saw, and, it, I saw it live, obviously not on Broadway itself, but when they were touring. But um, Yeah, me too. Yeah, actually, the date and time. <laughs> I, I was I was very fortunate to be able to actually see it uh, on stage in London when I went on vacation oh, nice. there in in 2010 I think. Uh, needless to say, it was spectacular. Um, yeah, so, I bet. Yeah. So yeah, that's another check mark you could put on my list. I, I love musicals <laughs> and I love the theater. I try to go to a show at least once a year. And the thing is, like, there's nothing to say that we might not actually do a 
an episode at one point on Wicked itself because it's not strictly a movie, but you know, I have talked about sort of expanding the scope of, mm-hmm. of our discussions because obviously it does have a film connection, um, yeah. not least because of The Wizard of Oz, but also because there you know, may be a, you know, a wicked, you know, film version in the future. So, you know, so I think there's a close enough connect connection to the film world that, uh, that we can, we can talk about whatever it. we want, John, it's our podcast. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, also, if you are going to um, get into theater and musicals specifically, I, I would suggest Avenue Q. If I love you Avenue find Q. recordings of it. Dude, Avenue Q gave me all my damn life. Yeah. <laughs> It's Sesame Street for adults, and I love it. It's great. <laughs> Hashtag the, only, the internet is made for porn. The only the problem with is made for porn. the only problem with doing uh, discussions on um, the stage musicals. I mean, it's basically the same yeah. problem we run into oh, doing so fil- film out. musicals. No, not yeah. that. It's just that Amy and I are just going to be singing the soundtrack <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> and, uh, I, I will be right there with you. You know, repeating lines. Yeah, it's. <laughs> It's it's what happens, man. <laughs> um, and speaking of which, we will actually be doing a, a musical early on in, in the podcast life because we're going to have both Kate and uh, a certain fellow named Br- Br- Branty? Bron- Bronte? Brant Hilaries? Yeah. yeah. Um, and they're going to be on. They're going to be on to talk about The Little Mermaid. So that'll yes. be a lot of fun. Um but uh, yeah, so uh, that's basically what's coming up with uh, Cinematic Realms. I mean, I'm just so excited to just, you know, sit in front of the microphone and, and be able to have a relaxed conversation. We love all you guys, but um, especially me. I, I mean, you guys kind of know I, I get stage fright, so it's going to be fun to uh, to explore this different, uh, you know, style of doing this. But uh, okay, so that's that's enough of that. Um, Amy, what do you have coming up? You can either I, uh, summarize or you can go all out again. It's not even to gonna you. summarize, just gonna say <laughs> here are all my links. I am a podcast now, I have a YouTube channel and my blog. I do lots of things. Follow me on Twitter and let us remind you about our Lord and Savior, please. The Poppy War. <laughs> <laughs> have you heard the good word? <laughs> We uh, in my book club actually we just did a one of probably the toughest if not one of the most the one of the toughest chapters in these books. Uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I had to give a I have only had to give a content warning like three times to uh, to my book club members. So, but that was I gave a huge one. I was like, I'm literally going to say, mute your computer now if you don't want to hear this, and then like while we were on zoom and then like give a thumbs up when the bad passage is over but like it was it was a lot and here's the thing since we're still going to be having video versions of the podcast you're still you'll still get to see me hold up the book exactly (laughs) but see here's the thing like even if even if that wasn't the case if we were doing audio only podcasts then i am certain that you would probably still grab the book and hold it it because you would be there john seeing my video (laughs) and you know this is an audience of one is is still worth it i gotta (laughs) preach the good word she's not wrong yeah this is true uh okay ak you want to go ahead and talk to jen about what you what you're working on Oh, uh, I think this was actually the very last uh, fully scheduled thing that I have. Um, Mad Queens on Monero Geek TV's channel will soon be uh, talking about Tyrion. Uh, that will be the last chapter in our Lannister Brothers uh, vids. And then we'll be moving on to the Starks. Hopefully we'll be having a special guest on for that one. Won't say it yet because it's not finalized. Um, I might hopefully be able to get myself together with a uh, continuing my writing and come up with um some creepypasta stories for uh the Hall- all hallows eve season uh in october we shall see uh, that that's pretty much it i'm, I'm rather spontaneous on, on when i show yeah, up on, later, on the Tyrion discussion is going to be over on monaro geek tv's channel yes yeah? yes that will yes. be on monaro geeks tv please yes. please check that out and hit that look well, after you subscribe hit the little bell um yeah so you'll she, get the alert she, she, she sometimes like even when I follow her on Twitter, she sometimes last minute decides to do a discussion. So you've got to have yep. that bell on. So, yes, she is very spontaneous. And we do have your name on the list, John. 
to experience the ginger ale chat. So never, no, no, don't you worry. So we got you. <laughs> no. Can't resist the ginger. Ale. <laughs> oh, I'm worried just for a whole another group of reasons now. <laughs> I asked him in the chat for that because he was in the chat for me and learned some unsavory things about his co-host. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I'm saying, look, when Monero puts that damn Benny Jesuit voice on you, you, you just got to listen. Like, there, there, there's, there's no walking away. There, there's no nothing. She's pretty much a damn pipe piper, and, and she, she's bringing you, you get to pulled open, in. You know. So yeah, they're, they're always fun though. You know, but don't come if you got. The speakers on and your kids are about it is not child friendly it conversation it's not at safe all. for work chat no yeah no so just be prepared to it's get one into of those random streams that are deleted yeah. later though yeah. that's the kind of feel one of those yeah. uh ra random raunchy uh conversations that we i mean have. there's basically two doors connecting this room to the rest of the house they're both going to be shut yeah, I'm just yeah. I, I would also, <laughs> I would also <laughs> add <laughs> headphones <laughs> yeah um, <laughs> oh, now I'm both uh, looking forward to that and petrified, but <laughs> but it'll be great. Oh, you'll love it! Like Agnes said, it'll be a gas. <laughs> oh, it'll be something. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so <laughs> I guess that's it. It feels weird now, just coming to the end and saying that this will be the last it does you know like I, I do hope that I, I was able to be informative and you know entertaining enough for this being your your last uh, actual live stream on the channel um yeah I, I, I'm sad that I won't be seeing you live but I'll uh, definitely try to make the chats as much possible if you do premieres and definitely still yeah. gonna follow you because you guys are awesome and, and I'm I'm thankful that you had me here yeah, thank you. Well, thank and you so uh much for being our, you know, final live stream guest. For now, who knows? Maybe we'll do special live stream events where yeah, we're you not never sure, know how but... things how, how the chips yeah. fall. Yeah. Yeah. Uh just so long as it's not every week so we can <laughs> so we can get part of our lives back and also uh not Indeed. stress. Yeah, not yeah next Saturday stressed. I will be uh, around this time. I will be on a plane, so that'll be fun if I am at, at an airport. I might if we do a premiere, I might pop into the chat, but otherwise I won't be able to join. Be like, no, Amy, emergency. We have to do a last minute live stream. Just talk through your phone. Go. It's actually my like worst nightmare <laughs> is being late to a stream or forgetting I have one. So more scheduled recordings, less live streams, just going to help my anxiety so much. Right. Uh, but no, I, I'm I'm really looking forward Fewer. to this. Sorry, Stannis was in my head. Fewer <laughs> live streams. <laughs> I am really looking forward, though, to this uh, first recording that we're going to do because, it, I mean, basically every stream that we've done, we've had a particular topic. We've been able to kind of, mm -hmm. you know, go off topic and go around a little bit. But for this uh, first episode, we're basically just going to get to just chat for, you know, for an hour and a half or so so it'll be a lot of fun but uh thank you everybody yeah th thank you everybody for tuning in uh i had a great time and uh it's been great doing these uh live streams each week and and you know like we were saying this might you know it might not be the last one we might do you know the special live streams in the future but in the meantime uh you'll be able to catch us on the cinematic realms podcast uh, and just stay tuned for that. Uh, hope you guys have an absolutely wonderful night and, uh, and we'll see you later. Bye. Hasta. <laughs>